one. Pow! Hello. All right. How you doing, Duncan? Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Not bad. We can confirm. Yeah. Can confirm. Can, can indeed. Uh, can indeed. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to uh, another <laughs> thoughtfully laid out part of <laughs> Standard. Standard for us at this point. Um, well, well, just so everybody knows, uh, after... Well, firstly, you can see I'm quite lo-fi today because I've gone lo-fi. Um, we're going to have a break for the two weeks mm-hmm. from this point because uh, we're just a bit fried and we've got some stuff going on behind the scenes we need to do it so we're going to take a break we'll just know that however if you're on Patreon we've lined up some content for you and I've already got some stuff ready I won't say what it is yet but there's uh, you can, everyone on Patreon is going to be entertained over the break um, sorry to hold that those of you who are not on Patreon hostage but uh, those of you who are there's going to be content going up um, at least three things possibly more we hope so that's that and yep. i will be doing a, a ama on sunday as scheduled for our three dollars and up uh duncan did his five dollar and up private watch party last night with martin or uh, witches of dumpling farm or Mickey witches yes yes which i think we will be putting out as, a, as bonus content on the channel probably at some undetermined point of view so you'll all get to see that but obviously yeah we wanted to kind of that was a that was an exclusive for patreon you know to watch it live and everything which was was cool and uh, i think it went down quite well i think we, we even had people leaving the live stream to go and watch the film because they seemed they were sort of into it i think and wanted to kind of go and check it out so that was really cool that's good and it was kind of weird because i was like uh, piping it through my laptop so i was just right. sort of like watching rocky three and uh those of you who saw my club of lang tweet will know what that was about and I had that sort of like, I so saw I had you, I felt like a kind of, not just because I'm bald, but I felt like a kind of Lex Luthor mastermind sat there pressing all the buttons <laughs> and stuff. It was quite weird. Um, puppet master. The puppet master, yeah. Um, so, uh, Men in Black, um, we talked about this on It Ain't Broke ages ago, but it's the only time we've ever covered these movies was, was then. Um, and we're both fans of this movie, right? We both like this massively movie. Massively so, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's not, it's, it, you know, it's sort of, I guess it's a modern classic in a way, and it's uh, it's nice to sort of be of an age now where you've kind of, I've kind of got that, but I actually, I got to see it in the cinema, you know, I went and saw it when it, when it came out. Same. I got my bike nicked that day. That's kind of, no. my, yeah, I know, Cambridge, shocker. Um, yeah. But, it, yeah, same. And I was just like, oh, wow, this is great. It, it had all the adverts come out in the cinema, and it had a great time, and it stuck with me. Um, and it's also, it's one of these things my, I, I view it as kind of the 90s Ghostbusters and I think there's a lot of arguments for that um, mm-hmm. yeah that's a good shout yeah, yeah I think it feels it's not as kind of adult as the Ghostbusters but it, it, what I do like about it is it's kind of mildly filthy it gets, it sneaks in like a necrophilia joke quite early on in the in the movie and stuff like that um, yeah. which is which is really really cool great cast great effects uh, great score with Danny Elfman um, I'm a I'm a big Sonnenfeld fan and I think Sonnenfeld the, of, of those who voted on Patreon, it's Sonnenfeld Week, which was your idea, right? You came up with this two Sonnenfeld I, I thought it was, well, I can't remember if we both sort of suggested it, but yeah, I mean, something anyway, it doesn't matter whose idea it was. Mm. Well, I, we live in a communist country, so there are no, there is no ideas are, are distributed equally among the workers. That's how that Indeed. works. Um, <laughs> I hadn't seen Get Shorty until we did this channel. And that's mm. like Adam's Family Values. The second Adam's Family film is one of my favourite films ever. I think it's right. I think it's wonderful. It's a br- pitch perfect, brilliantly kind of weird movie. I love it. Um, Get Shorty in, on my Sonnenfeld list went all the way up. I don't know how I went this long and didn't watch it, but I immediately I loved love that it. Film. That's brilliant, yeah. brilliant film. I, I think he's such a wonderful director. Um, Oh, I meant to say, Andrew Kay gave his his uh, now now standard ten pounds uh, every week. Andrew Kay, thank you so much. Um, that came in, and Mike Boyle just gave five pounds in a super chat and says, uh, "Had a tough couple of weeks. Your Total Recall Commando Running Man commentaries kept me going. Oh, good, glad. Oh, They're particularly silly ones. I think. I think the James Bond Naturally. making a man eat a toilet is from the Commando one, <laughs> um, which is kind of like a, a, a fan favorite moment of, <laughs> of commentary shit. Um, so yeah men in black it's on it's on amazon prime uh or if you own it you know whatever but we we oh, oh it's not on amazon prime, it's it's on, on prime? no 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 so it's not it's on amazon right. you gotta pay money to watch it which is what we will be doing so sorry about that um <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> you raised my hopes <laughs> like, like, which yeah. one of these things when this came up i just thought like it just seems so kind of ubiquitous to me this film and i think it used to be on netflix Oh, it was until recently. It's one of those like, oh, it 
you know, could have watched it a month ago, but now it's bloody gone off everything. But that's yeah. all right. I mean, I I think I own it on. I must own it on DVD. I think I've owned it in several formats, so it's um, you know, so what? And I don't. I, I'm not adverse to sort of giving more money to it because I think it's a worthwhile. Oh, Kirk, yeah, Duncan and I will be renting it. Kirk has just said if you have a VPN, it's on Netflix in France and Germany. So any of you VPNing at home can Netflix to, to France and Germany and save yourself a few few shekels. So that, or if you're in, there was, I can't remember who it was the other week, the poor chap who was in Germany. Oh, yeah, when we did Dawn of the Dead, the guy, there was a guy in Germany, I can't remember his name, but he was like the only one in the chat who couldn't watch the movie because that YouTube video was blocked oh, in no. Germany. And I was like, now's your time, that guy. Now just wait. Germany has some- Germany has some funny restrictions because yeah, the amount of things like where I've used music and stuff, like I think some of my even my music is blocked in Germany. Like I think I made a show real years ago and I thought I know I'll use one of my band's old songs that way no one can get me on a copyright strike because when YouTube went through a thing where it's like if you you got copyright claimed it was like the sound wouldn't play. Okay, it wasn't just like the monetization went somewhere else. It was just like the sound wouldn't play. Mm-hmm. Um. And um, the only the only country that happened in was Germany, and I was like, "But that's my song." <laughs> and I was like, "Oh well, never mind." That's but they. That, I think that was something to do with yeah. We had a, we had songs in a in a computer game that came out in Germany. And this oh, is right, okay. over a decade ago, and uh, so I'm assuming that's what that was about. Someone who'd obviously got the license for it. You kept and, that quiet. You kept that bloody quiet. Well, you had music in a video game in Germany. Yeah, 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 it was for um, two actually. There, it was. I mean, it's not. It was in the handball manager game, which to us in in England sounds ridiculous, but to Germans, it's a big deal. Uh, hand, like handball. Handball. Yeah, so it was the national. It was the official national team's. <laughs> what manager. is going on? Am I, am I, I in a coma or do I have a head injury? Duncan, had, Duncan's band had a song in two separate games based on handball management. More than one song, we had a whole like uh, we did the music for it. Basically, what's going on? How you? How has this never come up? <laughs> because it's irrelevant to most things. Dude, I don't, you know, I, the Bob and Barn it. thing I did, and all the computer yeah. stuff we we'll talk about in a minute for the secret project we can't talk about. Oh, yeah, you true. Would have been insane. Sa- was it sand dollars? Yeah, yeah. On, on the yeah. Zupa and Balan Manager. <laughs> <laughs> and as it were, Zwanzig yeah. and oh, I've forgotten my German. We got, I've got so my, my wife, bless her, dug it, was going through old sort of DVDs or something the other day. Going, what the fuck is this? And I like, was like, can we throw this out? And just held, held it up, and it was it was like Handball Manager, Spy Thousand Act or whatever. <laughs> and it has like, it has their, their, their team, the official team manager, like on the front cover, going like, ah, and he looks like an Asterix character because he's got a big moustache. <laughs> you know, that's French. Uh, but he's like, ah, or whatever. And um, and they're all signed by him. Like we got signed copies by the. This was all because my uncle Ray, who was like their official photographer for a long time, and he like I don't know how he pulled strings or whatever to get us into that. But yeah, so we we're in the. That's. I mean, I don't. I didn't play it. I didn't. No, well, got, I, what, what what was it on Xbox or something or? Um, a PC, I think. Right, right. Handball manager. What? I, okay. Right, I feel like yeah, I absolutely feel like I'm going to wake up in a minute. It's like, <laughs> so, oh yeah, no. Today's uh, live stream is with Richard Duncan and uh, Richard's music teacher from Year Six, who's wearing a Barney the Dinosaur suit, and it's all taking place on a tennis court in space. <laughs> you know, and, and we're all late for an exam or, or whatever. I, and in our underwear, yes. or whatever the usual thing is, and our teeth fell out. The um... <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I don't know. I think. Um... In my, in terms of my computer game career, I would I would place Erica slightly higher above. Yes, no, I can see why you would. I can see why you would. That's um, yeah. I don't know. That's just a weird because I suppose to you that's something that's right at the back of your purview. Where to me it's right at the front. So it's I like would 40. expect you to mention it to me, but you're like, why would I tell anyone that? I suppose. It's not what I lead with usually, no. Unless uh, I'm in Germany at a handball game. I remember when uh, when we first met at that screening of Robocop 2014, you walked straight up to me with your hand extended and said, I provided the soundtrack for Handball Manager. Honestly, <laughs> anything else? <laughs> like, anything just else. Can I, and he had a t-shirt on as well with the logo. <laughs> yeah, a picture of me holding the cover of the... Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Replicating the cover studs. People, that's what you tune in for. You've got a, uh, um, you've got a super chat there, my friend, from Randall Windle. 
Oh, right. One sec. We'll go, I'll just cover the paid pal. Oh, yes, I may. please. Of course. Of course. No, so we've got Andrew Caput's, God bless him, sending his ten, ten pins as he, as he loves to do, which is very, very gratefully received, Andrew. Thank you. Uh, Logan Howick once again sends us 20 pounds. Howick, Howick. 20 Sounds pounds like again. A... Good God. Thank you so much. That's very, very oh. kind. Uh, Annalise sends a six pounds seventy four, uh, and says, "Evening guys, looking for, sorry, evening guys, looking forward to." Uh, I'm gonna. It's the voice of David Hedison. <laughs> Good evening, guys. Uh, looking forward to a movie film close to my home turf, but I hope we can watch Adam Family Values sometimes. It's a treasure. All your life. I don't know what that means. I, w- I uh, Annalise. Uh, I think you said that on the. Um patreon thing uh post and yeah i i might throw in adam's family face for a private watch party or something because i i it's just one of the best films ever made i i will die i will die on that hill anyway sorry carry on that's right and then just uh my dad philip casey uh mbu sends us 10 pounds says great interview with martin good luck tonight so thank you thank you, uh, thank you dad very cool yeah now that's i believe it for the paid power and then you said what this is super chat yeah, would you like me to read the question for you I, do, I can't do it in the voice of david Hedison. That's a shame. Um, that is a bit of a shame. To Duncan! I'm just going to do it in a dramatic way. To Duncan! Hearing your take on actors is always interesting. I watched Blade Runner 2049 recently and wondered how David Bowie would have done as the villain. What is your opinion of him as an actor? Well, I really like David Bowie as an actor. I thought, um, I thought he was really good in The Prestige. Uh, That's a very cool kind of weird role, isn't it, as Tesla? Tesla, yeah, yeah. It's Tesla. He sort of has a bit of a German accent. He's really good though, and I, and I, um, no, I thought he was cool, man. He's someone who sort of he's just one of those people who's quite interesting to watch, even if he's just re- he could be giving you a recipe for vegetable soup. He's still interesting to listen to. Mm. Uh, so um, yeah, no, I, I'm a big fan of. Him. I like it. He, had, I, he didn't do a lot, but um, he traded on that kind of. Um ethereal sort of alien quality didn't he it's what people like to say about Keanu Reeves a lot but I think because he did like the man who fell to earth and stuff and obviously Labyrinth where he's kind of otherworldly characters and I think people view them dance magic dance <laughs> dance magic dance <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah yeah bless him I've, I have found that oddly enough because he does a very good comic turn in extras you know it's like a chubby little loser with them um, yeah. uh, in I find in the prestige that he sort of looks like Ricky Gervais in a distracting way <laughs> like I sort of okay, it, yeah. when he was projected this high when I saw it at the cinema I couldn't unsee it and I was like oh that's that's quite weird I find Nikola Tesla played by David Bowie as Ricky Gervais yeah. it's kind of layers of, of, of confusion that I can't quite reconcile um, <laughs> but, but, but there you go um, wait, when did you want to kick off tonight we could kick off at uh, as soon as I buy the movie uh... as as might, let's say 20 past that gives us 7 minutes so okay. Right. I'll, buy, um, I'll buy the movie as well. Do I buy or do I rent? Hmm. Oh, that is a mm, that's the quandary now, isn't it? Because I had to buy Ghost. I had to buy Ghostbusters last week. It's kind of like, no, well, it's kind of neat to have Ghostbusters, I guess. And then I realised the time we did Die Hard with a Vengeance, I bought Die Hard with a Vengeance, and it's kind of like, well, it's kind of good to have Die Hard with a Vengeance. I'm not gonna, you know. Yeah, I think I did that as well. Did I? Do that? Oh, oh no, I, I had it. It's eight quid to okay. buy it. I might be too tight to do that, but then I get to have Men in Black. Hmm. It's one of those films that I do know, like the back of my hand, and I have seen a million times. But I wouldn't mind having. It's like you know, I mean, it is quite ubiquitous. Like it is on TV a lot, and it is on streaming services a lot. Just yes. isn't right now, yeah. Actually, of course, because it's like, why would it be? Um, I find that but... um, three seems to be on TV a lot, and I feel like three is underloved because um, it's a film. I... Three is wonderful. We both love it, right? I, I, it's a really great yeah. movie. Um, you know, I'm not. I don't have a, a huge amount of time for two. I feel like they rushed into two and just felt like they had to do it rather than it needed mm. to exist. Yeah. Um, which is, you know, two's got good things in it, um, but three, three's great. Three's loads of fun, and Josh Brolin as, as young uh, Tommy Lee Jones does such great, great work. Um, I think it's really important to keep because the thing is, like, Tommy Lee Jones is barely in it, but it keeps his characterization of K in the foreground of the film so you don't miss him because Berlin does yeah. such a, a great job um, I don't know I don't know I don't know man I don't actually think because I was going to do this via um, Apple because that's where all my movies are so if I buy them on Apple it's easier but I don't know if there's an option to rent it so I might just have to buy it 7 99 hey so, big spender 
that's it. I'm just going to do it. We'll kick off at 20 past because we've got, we've got people VPNing into Netflix in France by the sound of things. Um, mm. So we'll let them do that. And uh, it was Patrick who was unable to watch Dawn of the Dead, poor Patrick, but he, he got there in the end. So he just he is here. So he said, hi, oh, yes, that's good. I, I, I'm really happy for Patrick. I feel like Patrick's day has come <laughs> like after, <laughs> after the Dawn of the Dead debacle. Um, yeah. See, it all comes back. Right, I've, I've bought it. Fuck it. All right, there we go. We're right, okay. good to go. Jolly good. I'm going to make sure my subtitles. Yeah, I think I will... Um, I think I will watch this myself later or at the weekend. So I've not watched it in a yeah. while. Um, I did watch. I made a point of watching Adam's Family Values over Christmas, over uh, uh, Halloween. Um, okay. Because it's just it's firstly it's weirdly both those movies are weirdly horny. Like the the whole relationship between Gomez and Morticia is this really sexualized thing, but it's doing this kind of nineteen uh, fifties, nineteen sixties golden age screwball comedy thing really, really well. It's like a pitch perfect kind of noir screwball fusion, and it's so inveterately morbid. It's so fixated on death and like gross, disgusting things. It's got this great deadpan humor. Uh, I mean, the cast in those movies is unbelievable. Like Raúl Julia, we're not talking about Adam's family. I'm just feeling gutted that it didn't get voted in so I'm going to talk about it here um, Raul Julia and Angelica Houston have the most amazing chemistry in those roles and it's a film directed by it's important to remember that Bryce O'Fair was the cinematographer first um, and he uses lighting so skillfully and the famous thing in the Adams Family movies is when, when, whenever you see Morticia regardless of what time of day it is or wherever she's always got that kind of strip of light across her eyes and <laughs> even even in wide shots sometimes she's, got like, <laughs> she's the only one with a bit it's fucking genius it's the most arch thing i love it um i love it so much uh and he was uh friends at nyu film school with bill pope all right okay yeah yeah mm. and he met the cohen's there and he, so he did like blood simple and raising arizona did like the early Cohen's films. He was cinematographer. He was sacked from uh, Tango and Cash, your favourite movie, as cinematographer. Um, you know, you know, and that probably makes you like him even more, right? It's like, yeah, good. Yeah. Get the, get the fuck out of there. Fuck that movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, I've rented that one. Yes. No, I'm, I, I'll live without that, to be honest. I don't mind it, but I'll live without it. Um, I've just been on a Rocky binge this week in a weird order. Yeah. I did the I did the binge movies podcast the other week with those guys and that's all about Rocky so I've been watching the Rockies again and uh, I've gone in a strange order so I think I did Rocky Balboa and then I did Rocky one Rocky two Rocky three oh no I did Rocky four Rocky Balboa one two and three so now I'm going to skip ahead to Creed then Creed two I guess because I'm not going to watch yeah. five I probably am going to watch five <sighs> but anyway <laughs> you're going to exhaust them all and be like oh, but there is one more. I, re I really am, aren't I? It's going to be the last malformed biscuit in the pack that's got a bit of dog poo on it somehow that I eat anyway. Because it's, you know, it's locked down and I can't go to Tesco. It's it's that. It's absolutely that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember doing that buying because when uh, Batman Begins came out, they brought out special editions of all the older films and it was like they had all these special features on them that you couldn't get. I don't think they've done them before. And I was like, oh, yeah. So I went out and bought all of them apart from Batman and Robin. And I just remember being sat at home being like, what the fuck would the special features on that be like? And I went out and paid like 20 quid or whatever just so I could watch Joel Schumacher and go, I'm really, really sorry. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, bless him. Because he bless does. He, he, poor, poor fella. Like he does... He was like apologizing for it. He was like, you know, but he was like, but I was a, I was an adult. I went in with my eyes open. I knew what I was doing. You know, you've got to respect what? that level what? of self reflection, haven't you? Oh yeah, you know. You've got I mean, a he he was he was a great director as well. Like, I mean, you know, I know those films are sort of derided and perhaps rightfully so, especially that one. But uh, he directed the shit out of some other movies, though. Like I thought it was really great. And you got to what? swing for the fences sometimes, right? Yeah. Hey, look. I I did I I love DC Cab so much that it, I thought it was worth a video. Right, yeah. I, I was I liked that movie so much, and I've had a continuing <laughs> Floyd Dillon and I have had a continuing Twitter beef about uh, Mr T in 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 that movie. But never mind. Um, Sean Northridge says hello, chaps. Any Irish films you'd be up to do a stream of? Suggestions: Angela's Ashes, Agnes Brown, The Van, or The Snapper. I've only seen Angela's Ashes in the van. Out of those. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Sunday, bloody Sunday. Sunday, bloody Sunday. Um, um, I don't know any of those. Uh, the van has the the great uh, the great um, 
called Mimi in it. Um, well, that's... And it's about a chip van. It's great. It's a great movie. Um, <laughs> I was less bothered about Angry Birds. Ashes. I've, I've only seen two of those, uh, Sean, and you gave us five euro. Um, so we're going to have to go watch all of them to, <laughs> to, to, to assuage our guilt. Um, but the van's great. I, the van's a really good time. A really fun movie. Uh, and good old Colin Meany is, um, you know, he's Colin Meany. He can do, do whatever the fuck he wants. I'll get this fucker myself! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Simon C gives nine ninety nine and and asks he asks nothing of us. He simply gives. He asks nothing of us. Cheers, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. I'll, I'll reimburse that shortly for the usual, for the usual channels. Um, what? Oh, Simon's my mate, so I'll do, I'm doing a joke. You see, I'm getting uh, money off of. I, I went for a run with him yesterday. <laughs> and he's giving me money. <laughs> <laughs> In your face, Simon. Uh, Omar says, Duncan, No Time to Die is coming out eight days early on the 30th of September. <laughs> yeah, at this point, though, that might as well be like, <laughs> I mean, what, eight, a week. It's, it's only nine years late. <laughs> they're, giving, they're giving us a week back. Thank you. Um, no, I, uh, is it, though? I love you, Omar, by the way, but is it? I don't know. I mean, I don't, at this point, I don't, I don't sort of do it. It's like, oh, right, thanks. It's two years late. But Simon's defending the charge um, that I reimburse him. <laughs> it doesn't actually happen, everyone. That's a joke. Uh, <laughs> uh, Kirk Coffee Man, five pounds. Have you seen The Kid Detective as recommended by RLM? Also, I'm thinking of ending things, brackets the movie. It's not a cry for help. Don't watch that pissed. Um, I haven't seen Kid Detective. Have you? I don't, I don't know. I've, I kind of dropped off of R RLM stuff. Um Sorry. I got a I read Letter Media. Yeah, so Red Letter Media, yeah. I just got like my problem with the Red Letter Media was I got so annoyed with people fucking throwing Red Letter Media memes at us all the time that it's maybe stop right. watching Red Letter Media. Like that doesn't really happen on this channel, but on the last channel. And then it was kind of like everyone just kept saying, You just ripped them off. So like I was like, Well fine, I won't watch it then because you can't accuse me of fucking stealing their ideas. And that's been yeah. unfortunately like that for a few years now, which is which is a shame because it's a good channel. Um yeah. uh, so Sean gives another two euro. Thank you, Sean. It says so much for the Catholic guilt you're missing out on. <laughs> this is so much Catholic guilt. You're so missing much Catholic out on. guilt. Oh, sorry. So much Catholic guilt you're missing out on. Yes. Sorry, we'll flog ourselves after the stream as yes, usual. As, uh, as is standard, we normally flog each other, but obviously because of social distancing, that's not allowed. Uh, we've also had to make our soggy biscuits into Zoom sessions, which is really difficult. Particularly, you is. have to post each other the biscuit afterwards to the loser. It's <laughs> <laughs> First class recorded tracks. Go, go. <laughs> Sign, Sign for, for guarantee 12. <laughs> so I know he's got it. Uh, yeah. Dan, Dan brought up that thing about, um, you know, they're refilming or well, they're doing loads of pickups on No Time to Die because the product placement is out of date. Uh, oh, I'm not sure I buy that. I'm not sure I buy that at all. That is a. Because it's something to do with, like, because it was Sony, I think, spawned. Well, so Sony. just do that. They could do that digitally, surely. They just do replacements well, they, if they needed to. I don't think. The thing here's the thing. So, like, I, the only product placement kind of in the film that I would have thought would have any that that would have any merit with would be things like the phones and the technology, like as in the the real world, like mobile phones. And oh, whatever. sure, okay. But okay. I don't believe that product placement deals come with a must be the latest device clause. I think it's whatever the company provides or wishes to show. You know, there'll be a, there'll be a liaison between them and, you know, like I know with the watch and everything that that has now become this crazy thing where it's like they literally design it with Amiga and then they make a special watch for the film. It's not just a production watch; it's a special one. Um, but it's I don't think I'm pretty sure no product placement clause would come with the, the idea that. Because if you think about it, if you put that clause into a contract, it was like, must be the latest phone. It's like, well, then wouldn't they have to reshoot every time like a DVD comes out or it goes on TV? Or, do you know what I mean? How would that even work? How would And, and no one in their right mind would go, yeah. Like, it's, like, <laughs> <laughs> why would that... You know, I heard it's been uh, released with Daniel Craig's insisted that the bunny Snapchat filter is applied to his face and voice for the entire <laughs> film. Yeah. That's what I heard. <laughs> and that the toilet that he makes a man eat is voiced by <laughs> Vincent D'Onofrio. Yeah, it's voiced by Vincent D'Onofrio, and it has to show the Armitage Shanks branding at <laughs> yes, all times. The latest. It has to be the latest in the. In and there the, has to be a line of dialogue rivalry. showing how difficult it is to eat because it's such a sturdy toilet. Yeah, it's such sturdy, such sturdy. Is it, the, is it fully work by putting a 
Porcelain. Oh, it's such robust porcelain, <laughs> James Bond. Actually, James <laughs> Bond. <laughs> they, they fed it. They fed it. They fed a um. Yeah, they fed a urinal to a goat or something <laughs> <laughs> to do foley on it. Meh. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to cut around that. I fed it to a goat. <laughs> It's the only animal with jaws powerful enough to bite through your eye off. Oh, stop it, James Bond. I'm allergic to toilets. Check out my medical bracelet. (laughs) This is a reference to an audio commentary we recorded nearly three years ago. So as you can see, Sean, uh, I I don't think much of that. I, I mean, I I just I can't see how that's true. To be honest, it might be that they're using it. I can understand why. Like, if they were going to throw some more money at them and go like, yeah, yeah, yeah. If we if we get whoever back, so we can reshoot a, a cutaway or an insert shot of something, and, and then pay for it, I could understand that. But I don't think it's a part of a clause in the contract that says they have to do that. I, I can't imagine. But I, you know because. Don't forget where these these product placement deals came out of, like back in the day, like and how it really stands is if you want to show a product in your film or a brand, you have to pay them usually. That's it's usually mm. a deal worked mm. out with them. You're not supposed to show branding, which is why a lot of things like they'll have car debadged cars and stuff like that. Um, especially in advertising, because that's all you know, obviously if you if you need to show a car in your Gillette advert you're not going to be advertising for Mazda or whatever, are you? So, um, <clears throat> but um, in, in the case of James Bond, obviously it, it started because, because the character is so defined in the books by his choice of brands, um, in a way, like they... Russell, Katie. I can't think of any other <laughs> brands, sorry. Was, I, if I had a third person called Brand, carry on. Um, <laughs> um, and... Um, so you know he had to have branded stuff, and they I think got they they got around a lot of it, but I think um, you know that's what they like to deal with Aston Martin happened because James Bond drives a Bentley in the books, and they couldn't get Bentley to agree to let them show it, and I think Aston Martin they had to go and actually buy the cars to use in the film. Nowadays, because obviously it's such a prominent thing, obviously they paid him to use them. Um, but yeah, so that's the kind of that's what I mean. So like, that's the basis for this stuff. It's not like. Um, yeah. I, I hate to interrupt. We have a backlog now of super chats, which is a, a nice boast to be able to have. Um, Indeed. Joe Zilla gave five US dollars and he says, uh, weird pandemic theme suggestion, the Omega Man. Love you guys and your content. Uh, I personally love the Omega Man. Amazing movie. Ah. <laughs> exactly, precisely. You could do a watch party of I Am Legend adaptations because there's the Vincent Price one, the Charlton Heston one and the Will Smith one. Right. Um, so there's The Last Man on Earth, the Omega Man and, and I Am Legend. And... Mm. and uh, I Am Legend is basically a remake of the Omega Man more than it is, uh, whereas The Last One on Earth is ironically very, very close to the book, but has a different name because Richard Matheson hated it. Um, so, Josella, I would love to throw that in the mix sometime. That'd it's, be cool. Yeah, I think that's a great, it's a great, uh, maybe we could do a pandemic, th- a bit gross, we could do pandemic movies maybe. So, 28 mm-hmm. Days Later, The Omega Man and Contagion. You always got to get you 28 so. Days Later and then you oh, always it's not uh, they're not zombies that's what Dan that's what um, that's what uh, Danny Boyle said and I was just like shut up Danny Boyle they are they, they basically are like shut up uh, Petter Danielson is given uh, 50 Norwegian crowns kroner crowns I, I, mm, knock he's given 50 knock thank you very much Petter. I need dating advice a Tinder profile says I'm Irish which means I'm friendly by nature so say hi is that true or a red flag please advise that's true, Irish people. Irish people are very friendly. In my experience. If an Irish person says they're friendly, I take that at face value. Um, so I would, I would, I would say yes, Peter. Also, generally, the accepted thing on Tinder is that the guy goes first, anyway, isn't it? So you're gonna have to say hi, whatever happens. This is this true? Is true or a read flag? Well, I, I think. Well. I think that means red flag. He might mean like a, 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 a reed flag. Like a, 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 <laughs> flag, a flag fashion flag from reeds. Flag reed. No, no, no. It's not R E E D. It's R E A D. Oh, sorry, R E A D. I'm blind. <laughs> Is it true or a, a reed flag? A flag you read, but it has lies on it. It, um, it'd be printed in, in at least 4 PT just to fit enough text. <laughs> text. Sorry, Petter. Sorry, Petter. Petter and our petty. 
Uh, um, <laughs> good save. Good work. Yeah, excellent work. Fantastic job, shot degree. Um, yeah, I, I, well, well any, most Irish people I know have all been lovely and wonderful. And, you know, um, vote Saxon 07 included. My experience um, of being there was well, actually, I'll tell you, what, it's not even yeah. it's not even being in Dublin that tells me that. It's meeting Irish people abroad. Because whenever you meet mm. Irish people abroad, they're always like super outgoing, friendly folk that are out there. And everyone's met an Irish person out there. You know, whatever whatever country you're in, there's always mm. like, oh yeah, you've, you, they're from Ireland. It's like, oh, so I'd say yes, mate. I say go for it. Yeah. Go for it, I say. Can confirm. I've, right. Uh, uh, yeah, should we We should probably... We we, we're, oh, it's, fucking hell, we're, we're 10 minutes over. Yeah. It's fine. Let's crack on. Um, right. Uh, let's protect the earth from the scum of the universe, Duncan. That's what I'm going to say. Uh, oh, by the way, that. Kirk has done a picture of us as men in black on Twitter. Ooh. Yes, which I'll try. I'll dig out after the stream to pop onto the thing. Uh, to pop Somewhere there the is there is footage of me being a legit man in black because oh, I had to. Fuck! How did I? Forget? Let's oh, no, let's start the movie and we'll talk about it. Yeah, yeah. Duncan yeah. actually was a kind of canon man in black. Sort of. <laughs> sort of. It's exciting. It's exciting. <laughs> Okay, I'll yeah. let you count, you count a thing because I'll just do something dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I will not sanction your buffoonery. <laughs> I like Bill Clinton. Yes, I do. Well, Tommy uh, used to uh, share a room with Al Gore, so degrees of separation. Yes, that's it. That's true. It's, well, at Yale, they share yeah. a room. It's a true story. There you go. Um, no wonder he's so grumpy. I don't yeah, know. <laughs> I'm making wrong. Anyway, uh, whatever. Now, um, yes, okay. Uh, ready your copies now to the zero point, and uh, get ready to press play in five, four, three, two, one. Play movie. <laughs> Make movie go now. <laughs> Make movie go. Columbia, c c Columbia, c c c c c c c c Columbia. <laughs> That's how the music goes. Columbia, 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 Columbia from Cumbria. I feel like this is a particularly dismal watch party tonight. This is such a great idea. This is such a great opening. I remember this in the cinema, like this sort of grandiose thing with like this alien flies into get. You know what I mean? You got that. Yeah. Um, and then it just turns out to be a bug that gets spoilers splattered on the windshield. I think we've. Just... I think we've all seen it. I think we've all seen it. Yeah. The kind of wacky. Fo- I don't know if it's the same font. Okay, yes, I'm doing that. But like the Adams family has like I think this font as well, and it feels like this weird Sutterfeld kind of trademark. I don't it know. looks kind of like sort of fly legs or something. You know, sort of. Grotty. Or constellations, maybe. Or that, yeah, 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 that's what I say, yeah. 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 Sort of cleaned up. Yeah. Yeah, fair. It's not an alien, it's a dragonfly. Dragonfly. Get your dragonfly. Vincent D'Onofrio is amazing in this, by the way. We haven't even got there yet. Like, he's so good. He's so... I <laughs> rough butter! I still walk around, I said this in the fucking episode, I still walk around going, sugar in water, all the time. That's again one of those performances, and I think we touched on this when we were talking last night, we were sort of spoken about it before, it's like, I can't imagine, like, A, how he auditioned for that, if he auditioned for it. Mm. B, like, during filming and stuff, were they not like, the fuck is this guy doing? Like, because it's like when he pulls up <laughs> the, the thing, it's, ah, ah, it's all, like crazy over the top stuff, and you just think, that's never going to work, and yet it does brilliantly. You know, it's like it's just you amazing. See, you see Edgar for all of twenty seconds, Three right? Seconds. Before the bug yeah. takes him over, and you know, there's the whole skin tube meat bag thing that gets said, and he really feels like a giant cockroach inside a skin suit. Like it's yeah. so gross. Like because uh, by the way, Rick Baker effects, right? So we're talking really top level special effects stuff when he starts to rot and he's got like all the double chins and stuff and his eyes all gammy and shit and like he's like you say when he gets out of the truck he's like rah, rah, and, and all that stuff yeah yeah how do you audition yeah. for that it's like okay so you're a giant cockroach in a skin suit and you know <laughs> can you give us your best interpretation and it's like if he did what he does <laughs> in the film again like i can't imagine sort of doing that in a casting and and sort of getting anyone taking me seriously like i just can't imagine like it, i mean maybe it's just a different time and everything but i just can't yeah i don't know I, it's, weird. it's just d'onofrio is i mean i i love vincent d'onofrio in anything 
I, I think he's amazing. I think his version of Kingpin, if they don't carry yeah. that over into the Marvel movies, they're insane. Like that was, and, and the episode of Daredevil that was just about Kingpin's life was just amazing. It's because of him. He was so, yeah. and when he rolled out as that character. Um, so just to say, so this was based on, there, this was a comic um, and we had those of uh, those of you like Duncan I old enough to have lived through the nineties kind of um, the nineties uh, UFO conspiracy fad, you know. So we had the X Files and stuff and Independence Day, and and it was a huge huge fad to be into all these conspiracy stuff. There was a comic called Men in Black, uh, which was by Malibu Comics, I think, which then got bought by Marvel. It's quite an obscure comic. They optioned the movie. This movie b- is based on that comic and it changes really quite a lot. I think in the comic, instead of wiping your memory, they just fucking murdered you and stuff like that. Um, mm-hmm. it, it was uh, adapted by Ed Solomon, who's one of the writers of the Bill and Ted movies. So this screenplay story is by Ed Solomon. Isn't that what's his name? Baldwin? Billy Baldwin? Billy Baldwin? Is it Billy Baldwin? No, which, who is it? Which one is it? It's a Baldwin. No, no, it's um, that's the guy driving the van. No, this guy, the, the sheriff. The... No, he's not a Baldwin. Sure he he's just a man okay the right. guy driving the truck is uncle rico for napoleon dynamite his name I can no no i don't mean him. <laughs> yeah. the, the state trooper who gets another look this is see tommy lee jones is uh he's only 23 years old here he's just, <laughs> he's just made out of scrotum that's, that's <laughs> angry angry scrotum He's so good in this. And it wasn't the thing that apparently Tommy Lee Jones started doing it like uh, like Two Face, like he was acting all big and yeah everything. And Sonnenfeld had to say, "No, that's not what this is. Like you're the straight man." Yeah, he so- was he was doing the big, big, big energy, and it's not because it's not yeah. like it's a very it's it's very dry, isn't it? In yeah, both because even Will you know, Will Smith isn't the straight man in this, but it's still quite fairly restrained it's not two-faced levels of crazy it's and it's certainly not unsanctioned jim carrey buffoonery levels of, of stuff it's mostly kind of wisecracking mm. and it's um it's amazing like because will smith was so 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 big and this was fairly early on i mean like fresh prince had only ended a few years before this was the follow-up to Independence Day, wasn't it? Because you had Independence Day was the big yeah. thing, and then this was the next big thing, and it was like he did the song to it yeah. and everything. You know, that was it was a huge, there was a huge, it was a huge movie event. You know, in a lot of ways, and I just remember like, yeah, you could. It was one of those. I mean, don't really do it now, you know. But they, so it was one. Of, you know, you couldn't move for Men in Black stuff mm. for a while, and yeah, it was like the music video was all over the TV and everything. There's a cartoon and, um, series was also, as well. Yeah. Yeah. But it was it was a um you know I mean to all that for most people I think it felt like quite a wholly original sort of concept and stuff and um, I think it's an element of right place right yeah. time because much like because um, we talked about Mars attacks uh, on this channel before and these were the things that were okay to sort of take a sideways look at that sort of stuff because like, X Files was X the X Files was quite funny I think people forget that like when the X Files wanted to have fun like the x-files did really funny shit like there's some really funny episodes but a lot of this stuff like the i remember talking on the playground about how like you know the u.s government had ufos and shit because there's some trashy cheap magazines you'd get in the news agents and that and videos you can rent from the library all about it and it's all horse shit and we were fucking children <laughs> but for this to come and sort of go like well here's the wacky fun sort of clownish version of all that crap um it yeah. just was so i think it sort of Perhaps because that stuff was well in full swing, and like X Files was so so huge. X Files was the most ridiculously huge, and there was loads of knockoffs of it on TV, like Dark Skies and stuff like that. And I, I quite like Dark Skies, and I watched it till it ended. Yeah, that's right. Um, but for something to come along and like have a laugh about it and take the piss out of it a bit, and in such a kind of wry way. Um... Well, that's and and that's you know that's I I like you know I think Tommy D. Jones doesn't get enough credit in some ways for his comedy chops in this because this whole thing is is that although it could be direction but his whole thing is is like this is all just work a day stuff mm. right everything he goes through in this is so blase even getting eaten by an intergalactic cockroach <laughs> it's only the bit at the end when he goes like that's one of a thousand memories i don't want yeah you know it's like that's when he comes down to earth but it's like the rest of the thing is just like uh <laughs> sort of acting like this is just another day at work you know and that's the point you know and that's the joke isn't it because you've got will smith who's like this young guy who's like can't but he's just discovered that aliens exist <laughs> on earth yeah. and have done for so long and it's like 
what? <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's just he's just whisked along in this thing. That's just crazy. I mean, the, the hard thing to buy is you know when you do, there's the aptitude tests and it's like there's the firing range thing and he's like he comes out with all these funny but still bullshit reasons for why he shot all the people and it's like yeah, I'm not sure that would qualify you. But to he was be right. A... Why did that little girl have the physics books? He was right. He was right. <laughs> but also he shot a little girl. But it's Men in Black logic, so that's fine. But I, cause I, 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 I do like that, but I know what you mean. Because it is like the internal logic of the film, it works. It's kind of like, oh, well, you know, he's he's not doing anything. He's just working out. This guy's just walking down the street. This guy's got a cold. He's sneezing. That little girl has all these physics books. What's that all that about? But also, yeah. like, go and talk to her. Probably don't shoot her in the head. But then, the, but then that's yeah. the test, isn't it? You know, I love, yeah. I really love the um, the build up to that scene, or well, the beginning of that scene where he arrives late, and everyone else is who you would expect to be there, and they're all kind of square headed army types and navy and stuff. Yeah, they're all yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. And the pencil's broken, and the paper's too thin, and he's the only one he's that's not right. afraid to disrupt the situation and make a noise and make it. You know, he does a good bit of lateral thinking to then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I love him in this as well. Like, I think it, it, this was, I think that this was the first, oh, I guess I saw Independence Day in the cinema, but that's such an ensemble piece, whereas this is much more of a two-hander. And really, it's a Will Smith vehicle. It's just, mm. a, you know, Tommy Lee Jones is very prominent in it. But, um, you know, Will Smith is kind of the audience surrogate. Um, but I remember, yeah, watching it and just thinking he was, he was like, totally charismatic and... Um, yeah, just really fun to watch. Like he's just like there's a bit the, the opening thing when he's chasing the guy down who turns out to be an alien. Mm. There's just full of like very Will Smithy stuff. You know, he's like freeze. He's like freeze me. Stop. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, I think it's, and then, like when he goes, what does he say? He's like, if you were half the man I am, he's like, which time I am half the man you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we know that. it was supposed to be Chris O'Donnell, and um. And uh, okay. that's what he, Barry Sonnenfeld wanted, um, and he had to be sold on Will Smith. And it's I can't imagine it any other way. I mean, I'm not gonna get Chris O'Donnell, but like this is a Will Smith dude. Like he puts so much of him of him into it, right? And his whole kind because yeah. this is one of those things where the star comes on. It's like when they used to in, when they used to insert Schwarzenegger into stuff. They would right. just write one liners. They were okay. Well, it's one of those now, and they would just write lines for him. I'm not saying I don't mean yeah. that in a hack way. But like you know, clearly a lot of Will Smith's persona is injected into this, yeah. right? Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, and he's probably one of those like I got one of my mates in to like re- to do rewrites or whatever. You know, he's got a pal on set doing him doing him zinging one liners and shit. Right. You know, it's like that's that happens, man. Stars bring on people, but it, you know what? It works. Like it, I mean, if that's what happened, it works in this case. You know, I think. Um, I like see this. As, again, a, a, a direct you know cinematographer to director. I wonder yeah. what relationship is like on set because obviously union rules and stuff. You've got to have your cinematographer and stuff, and you've got to have someone who doesn't. You don't want to step on someone's toes and everything. But like these mm. are such a, like that shot of down the lobby of that building. It's like an M.C. Escher painting. It's amazing. Like it's mm. not got that logic, that kind of walk logic to it, but it has those kind of isometric shapes and stuff. And when he sees the guy jump up, it racks in on his face. And stuff. Is that his friend Parks, isn't it? Is it? Yeah, it looks like him. Yeah, I just sort of suddenly thought that when he did the flip over the wall. That'd make, that'd I make think sense. I might be a bit behind you, but um, because he's just, he's oh, just smashed the window. I don't know. His face. I'm not sure. Could be. Uh, yeah. anyway. anyway, anyway. No colours. Yeah, no, no, no. no. Yeah, we've seen him up close. It would make sense because, like, uh. That is Ray Parks. I thought that's Ray Some... Parks. That's not Ray Parks. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's not Ray Parks. Okay. This is the difference, right? When you do just a commentary, you don't have live feedback. When you when yeah, this yeah. saves so many people no longer have to type a comment. <laughs> so you did me in the other way because we get live. I think that looks. Yeah. It does look like him. It does look like him. Yeah, it's it looks like him. Absolutely. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Okay. We're getting we're getting into some Vincent D'Onofrio shit. So this is just pure kind of set dressing and stuff. So uh, Edgar's truck. I think I must be way behind you now because I'm still waiting for the guy to jump What's off the road. Ray Parks, jump off the road. Uh, 12.35. Oh, I just got to 12.35 as well. 
That's interesting. <laughs> so you're on Amazon and I'm on Yeah. Apple. This happens every week. Let's just leave it because otherwise we're going to, you know, it's just going to confuse yeah, you. Yeah. So fine. That's such a great stunt, though, when he jumps backwards off the thing in one hit and it is clearly a stunt. Yeah. I, I don't know how they did that. Oh, yeah, well, this is the thing. I mean, because this has, it's quite um, early CGI, isn't it, really, a lot of this? Um, mm. And it does, you know, hey, it kind of shows in places as well. But also, I'm fine with it because it's all kind of quite quite cartoony anyway as a, as a vibe, you know. This isn't, yeah. this isn't fucking, you know, it's not supposed to be social realism. I think we can take a sort of slightly glittery yeah. looking alien. I love it. I love that shot of the, the spaceship just coming out of nowhere and smashing into his truck. Well, so, yeah, well, as, as I was going to say, like, importantly, like, that's a kind of space AG 1950s, 1960s truck. And the yeah. whole, this, this film, what this film does is takes the entire, and this is what I love about it. It's, it's, uh, Sonnenfeld is looking at that 1950s, 1960s B movie aesthetic and putting it into a 90s big budget blockbuster spectacle. So it's all the bug eyed aliens, it's all the silver spaceships, it's all the ray guns, it's all the silly costumes, all of that applied to this kind of really arch. Like, it's, he looks so horrible. Even from when he first <laughs> is the bug guy, he just looks so horrible. Um, it takes that aesthetic and kind of use, and particularly in Men in Black 3, when they actually go back in time, the, but the, the past version of the MIB headquarters is so 19 they're all kind of b-movie like actual b-movie aliens walking around yeah. you know it's just so it's so nice it's so well it's that world's fair thing as well isn't it and the kind of idea that you have to go you have to go back to the past and these things these old structures are actually full of space age technology and it's it is it's that yeah it's that kind of uh, world of the future <laughs> the world of tomorrow well, kind of welcome thing. to the world of tomorrow which is what I mean. The, the Batman, the animated series, lent so heavily into that mm. um, in a really wonderful way, in a sort of totally, un- totally unnecessary way in a lot of a lot of ways. But you know, um, it, it really defined that show in a really great way. Um, yeah, well, that, they their whole yeah their whole kind of retro future stuff, and the kind of uh, it was kind of a nineteen fifties thing, but also kind of like an Art Deco thing in that show. Um, As that bar. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I love, I love his. He's just like he studied that so well. The whole like, like even just drinking the water. He's like, it's that thing. He's just like, <laughs> sugar. Oh, it's like just like nothing is working really in sort of. Uh, he's got this. He's actually got really like a, a chintzy, wonky 1950s flying saucer, which he like doesn't he like have it like on the back of a tow truck or something. He just drives it around with yeah, it's like, it. No, it's just like smashed into the back, <laughs> isn't it? Because it doesn't fit. So he's just smashed it into the back of that truck. Oh. It's so funny, man. It's, it's just, yeah. And, and I mean, Barry Sonnenfeld has demonstrated time to time that he gets humour and he gets how to kind of uh, put humour onto camera. Like the cow. There's just a cow there <laughs> in, the, in the background, like looking on as he's wheeling out his... his uh, and that's the point. It's, it's making the sort of... What do they say? It's making the... Uh, oh, uh, Sam Mendes had a quote. It's, it's the unusual, usual, and the usual, usual. Uh, the usual, unusual. Yeah, whatever. Sure. So it's like, you know what I mean? It's like this is sort of work-a-day thing of like other oh, space aliens and shit. And it, it seems like the only person who doesn't get it is Will Smith. Yeah, he's... he's you know he, I mean? it, it kind of all... It doesn't even revolve around him, does it? He He's just sort of stuck in it. and Because he's not... A kind of chosen one. He's not the one who's going to change things. He's not got special powers, like you said earlier. He's he's uniquely qualified for this job. He's not the kind of normal person they'd choose. But everything that yeah. to him is an amazing adventure. I can't remember the exact line, but um, Kay just says to him, "There's always a Zephylopod invasion, or there's always a this, and there's always a that." Like it's so work a day to yeah. him. It it doesn't that. His his police chief or whoever that guy was was the guy from um, Hard Target. The the uh the one of the homeless people that they hunt down oh, right, the guy okay. who ends up... yeah 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 i'm sure it was i'm sure it's the same actor although apparently my who actors are skills has been called into question <laughs> uh, but nevertheless yeah no i i do i just love all that and here it's like they meet in a kind of like thing where he's just like he's here to kind of this is another guy i've got to freaking wipe his memory and it's like and he wipes and i love it because i love it like there's all these there's so much paranoia in this as well when he's like because um What's her name? Uh, the Linda, actress who also is... In, for, yeah, L- Linda Fiorentino. 
Fiorentina thank you she's she is an unsung hero of this film as well because she's freaking awesome and there's that bit where he's just like <laughs> he goes like how many times have you used that you're gonna give a cancer or some shit he's just like and he's just like uh he's like i've never heard of it before anyway blah, blah, blah. and he goes and he's like have you ever flashy thing me okay have you ever flashy thing me it's just like walks off because like, you know, it's that whole thing of like hang on like, i could not know anything about you know um, i love i love that I just love all that stuff there's so much like you know um it's it's one of those sort of again it's that thing we talked about it before of like there's rules to this world and when you get to see them they're quite clear but you don't need them explaining to you in any great detail and it's better that they don't you know it's better that you don't know why so and so came from the planet blog and had a beef with bloody blah, blah you know it's like mm. you don't need backstory just aliens exist that's the only premise you need and then from there on it's like you can just enjoy it you know it's like yeah exactly because i mean it does it does it i mean because it does adhere to its own rules crucially like you're saying it does that but it 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 gives you enough wiggle room to go like, look, this is this is fun. We're having a fun time. This is a roller coaster ride of sorts, you know. Because um, the third one, the third one, they had to rewrite and reshoot the whole third act, and I maintain that that doesn't show at all. I think it's fine. I, I think it's more than fine. Actually, I think it's great. Um, and it doesn't yeah. show a Tony Shal- the great Tony Shaloub as Jeebs. Yeah. Um, I I I do believe, and someone may correct me if I'm wrong, but um, because obviously the 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 end of the film is that Kay is in retirement, and uh, Linda Fiorentino is the new agent, um, and then at the end of at the start of two they kind of go like, (laughs) I believe that she didn't get on with someone on someone she didn't get on with somebody on this, and that's why she didn't come back. Uh So they're what they're. I think there's some something didn't quite work, and that's why she's not back. Because she's great as well. She's really, really good in this. Um, so I can't remember. That, that there is a very subtle necrophilia joke when they go to meet her at the morgue and there's something about her staying around with the bodies at night and it's just like this weird little thing. And it's like, yeah, that's yeah. not only kind of... If that was just a sex joke, it would be kind of mildly filthy. But because it's basically a necrophilia joke, it's really dark. <laughs> but, um, but again, that's all the stuff... Um, all the stuff uh, relating to Adam's family. Adam's the Adam's family jokes are so 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 dark constantly. Um, yeah, it's just... she's sort of just she's a more of a dry, less sweet. Um, uh, what's the name? Part of the I'm so tired. I, I can't I'm remember so her name. Tired. I am really I'm sorry. Oh bless you. Uh, what's her name? It'll come back. It'll come back in a minute, and I'll go, and then yeah. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. So I was the man in black. Well, yes, let's do, do that. that. Let's do um, that. that is, this is a, everybody. So, this is really interesting. Sort of, it but is. not really. It's it not is. that. You're a man in black, kind of, sort of, almost. You talk about you talk about the work a day thing. I mean, this was, it was just an audition, and I didn't get it. Um, but uh, it, no, it was for the the Lexus tie-in for Men in Black International, and um, I had. To, yeah, Lexi, uh, plural. Um, I didn't do that, I don't think, on the day. Anyway, um, but it was obviously the cool thing, the reason why I really wanted to do it was because um, Dan Kleinman was directing, and he's the guy who does all the uh, Bond, since Goldeneye, does all the change, all the uh, title sequences for Bond, apart from Quantum of Solace, but he does, he's done all the other ones. Um, so I was kind of like, oh, that's cool, that'd be, that'd be fun to be directed by him. Anyway. It didn't happen, but I did get to be on camera as a man in black and like in a legit way, I guess. And uh, that's that. But um, yeah, yeah, that's my. <laughs> I was trying to think if there was any more to that, but not really. Um, so I had some weird, but I mean, again, it was from Men in Black International, so the shit one. Well, let's talk about that later. Let's talk about that at some point tonight because I've got thoughts and feelings about that. It's a very yeah. frustrating movie. I will say this: uh, it's directed by F. Gary Gray, who's not someone I particularly rate. Who ironically directed "Be Cool," the the sequel to "Get Shorty," which is not something I rate either. I've not it seen. Is... I'd never heard anything good about it, and I hadn't seen. Oh, it's so short. Don't. Well, that's fine. That's so so. F. Gary Gray goes around like ruining Barry's film. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I see. He's the man you go to if you want your franchise <laughs> fucked. I did, he, he, he didn't direct the animated Adams Family movie that came out, um, which I did see, yes. uh, which was fine. It's fine. It was fine. I mean, if I was twelve, fine. 
but I've just got really high <laughs> expectations. I will, I will say this about this movie. I, I love, I love. Look, so when he goes to the MIB headquarters, there's these really insane wide shots that it's just like, what is that set? There's like a fucking 18 foot high fan on a wall. Like, it's just like the design of these places is, is insane. And all the kind of concrete brutalist stuff. It just, it looks like a kind of, sometimes it looks like a Soviet painting. And other times it looks like a surrealist sketch. It's fucking amazing. Like, it's incredible. People go like, yeah, yeah it's all right. It's kind of funny. No, fuck that. It's a treasure and you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it really is one of those films that I just think has, has, has aged incredibly well. I mean, this is, this is something, don't forget, that we kind of, this was a blockbuster type movie, right? This is what... You know, I'm don't get me wrong. Like, it's not. This is not to sort of be wistful and say that the '90s produced nothing but gold because that's bullshit. But and, and no decade has been without its crap. I suppose what happens is over time, generally the cream rises to the surface. I mean, that's a huge generalization and not necessarily true. But I mean, I suppose what happens is history filters out all the shit and we remember the good right, stuff. Okay. But um, you know, this was a this was a big blockbuster. You know, we had Independence Day, we had this. It feels weird to sort of wax lyrical and say that these were somehow, you know, this was some sort of golden age of <laughs> uh, this kind of cinema. But it's like this. I think Barry Sonnenfeld is an example of someone who can elevate material beyond what you would consider it to be. And I and I I you know I guess this is what every person says who gets to a certain age. But it's like I don't see this sort of thing happening now. I don't see this care and attention. That's but then there there are other films where that kind of thing happens. Like we we've spoken a lot about like Upgrade, for example. I don't know why that's just popped into my head, but that's that's, yeah, that's, that's, a, film a, that that's a good one to pick out pick out for now, though. I think that's a good choice. Yeah, you know, th- but those are the kind of films where nowadays I think this kind of stuff gets made at a, a lower level, if you like, budget wise, um, and doesn't get the same sort of release. You know, I think what's taken over the box office is something completely different. Um, ironically, you know the the Men in Black box office movie was. It's a very. Do well, you know an F. Gary Gray directed Fast and Furious Eight, for example, uh, which I, I you know I haven't seen, but people seem a bit tepid on compared to some of the other entries. Um, well, Justin Lee is the guy who kind of revived that franchise from I think four to seven. Yes, um, just Justin Justin and, Lin. Sorry to do that. Lin, sorry, I think you're wrong, fucking Justin. racist. <laughs> who, who, uh, <laughs> who, uh, who Brad shouted at <laughs> in the, the, yes, yes. At the Aquaman premiere? Yeah, um, I forgot. And the that. thing was, that was one of those, you know, Brad rants. Yeah, and we, we love, love Brad we for love his because he was like storming off, going, "What the fuck, <laughs> Justin Lin?" Not, of course, thinking that Justin Lin was actually there. And, um, <laughs> and I was just like, "Shut up, Brad Watson, director of Movie <laughs> Centers, <laughs> whom like, I've never yeah. met." <laughs> you know, never met and or worked with. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think he, he was yelling because we went around the corner to the pub and there was like um, Amber Heard and someone else coming out and getting in there. Oh, oh uh, Patrick Wilson getting in their cars and stuff. And it was just like, oh, um, which is just funny. I mean, I, I jest. Hey, like, we've, like we've done this, my side of that story was this, the time Brad called me at one in the morning drunk. <laughs> I missed that though. I think Brad, if you're watching, I missed that shit, man. No, fuck, like, fuck, miss fuck you, Brad. He's in fucking somewhere hot, isn't he? I can't remember where. He's in Barbados living it he? up, mate. You know. He is. Bastard. He is. Lovely bastard. Oh. <laughs> lovely bastard. <laughs> or bastard. Bastard. Watch the birdie, you lovely bastard. <laughs> oh, let's talk about Rep- Ripton. Ripton is fantastic. Oh. In his. He's so. He's so. Yeah. All right, let's go back to Cagger. Okay, and the thing is, I remember that because Will Smith does that in this film. Is why I remember that's that. the thing. Yeah, anytime there's a repetition of anything, it's like Lisa needs braces. <laughs> that that is plan. If, if like parrots, we just come back and go. Oh. Um, why would you have a firing range where everyone fires at the same time though? Because how would you know who hit what? That is a good question. Yeah, it's <laughs> very good. I mean, I They've guess got a they're black using technology, guns, I guess, or whatever. Yeah, I suppose so. And or whatever. <laughs> Ripton uh, passed away last year, didn't he? I think it was last year. Last year? Or was it before? before? Last year feels like it didn't happen, doesn't it? It's one big long. Uh, That's true. I know, yeah. I feel like I'm a year yeah. behind now. But, um, yeah. He's got such great... <laughs> because of um, his real-life travels, 
they replace him in MOB3 with Emma Thompson, who does, and, and she's fantastic. I love Emma Thompson. She's great. She's she's wonderful. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, she's really good. But they're kind of like, because of his real life problems, they, they kind of top of the film go, and uh, what's it? Uh, what's his uh, character called in this? I can't remember. Uh, is it? Okay, is it? Um, is it like, it's, Zed. Is it Zed? Yeah. They, they stop at MOB3, they just go like, and Zed is dead now, bye! <laughs> just, just like move on. <laughs> it's like, okay, that's rough. That's rough. I'm glad Emma Thompson But then you go back in time, and it's like you meet, you meet what should be a young Rip Torn, yeah, presumably. Yeah, and... shit. I, I, they really yeah, hit yeah. kind of. I don't like getting um, Brolin in. That's genius. I don't can't think because it, it's not just that he sort of looks like him, but he just does the performance so well. I don't know who because yeah. that what you've just, the reason I'm saying that is because like let's just say that because um, I think uh, Rip Torn didn't Rip Torn like try to rob a post office when he was on GHB or something. He did like something crazy. Oh, like, he did crazy yeah, old man know. shit. Um, <laughs> uh, I can't think of anyone who could just step in and be Rip Torn as a thirty year old. And if you hadn't shown me Josh Brolin as Tommy Lee Jones, I would never be able to do that either, I suppose. Um, I'm sure there are actors who could do it. Um, but, uh, yeah, because I mean, there are. There just are. I mean, there's, there's probably actors who I know who could do it. But, yeah, I know what you mean. It's like, I guess you have to choose from a famous pool of actors. And then, you know. Um, yeah, true. I mean, true. Probably, I think Vincent D'Onofrio could probably yes. do it quite well. Uh, but, that would be confusing uh, but also brilliant <laughs> it would be yeah um, I love that just that passing thing that's such a good choice it's like oh you because you've told the audience what that means and now we're going to use this over and over again so you're just passing a room it's like if you look just here and it's like <laughs> doof, and, you know there's, there's a little <laughs> so, thing they do right because I'm all about I'm all about this being kind of a, a tribute to the sort of 1950s 60s drive-in B-movie thing that's my whole vibe with this movie and you know, mm-hmm. they do a very subtle thing in this, which I really love. When the men in black activate the neuralizer, when it's reflected in their glasses, it goes blue and red like 3D glasses. Oh, does yeah. it? What it's a that? really, a really subtle little thing, and it's like, wow, yeah, that's fucking cool. That's oh, it's cool, a really that? subtle little thing. Um, that is, yeah, it's just like, yeah, nice, because that's that's. <sighs> It's shorthand for a time and place, you know. It's very much shorthand for a time and place, and I still think three D glasses look cool on anyone, like the paper ones. Um, like the guy in Back to the Future, isn't it? One of Biff's right. I know. I do, do, do you remember the video game Zombies Ate My Neighbors on on Snares and Mega Drive? Baby, the, yes, there's a kid actually, with yes. spiky hair, and then he wears three D glasses. And, uh, right, 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 David right, Tennant okay. wore 3D glasses and looked at him as well. I quite like old 3D glasses, is what I'm saying. Not the new ones, they're rubbish. <laughs> unless you poke the lenses out and pretend you're Michael Caine when you still have hair and go to a fancy dress party 10 years ago. Anyway. Um, That's so not a thing that happened. <laughs> no, yet. absolutely not. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's a lo- lovely, subtle little thing. Because uh, all of this stuff... And, and again, go to the, the, design, the design of the aliens is all about that. Because when... Um, <laughs> it's a great gag when... You know, they realise something bad's going down on Earth because all the aliens are fleeing. And there's the couple that are pregnant, and it's a it's a, oh, yeah, it's yeah. just a classic tentacle monster. It's your good old yeah. fashioned B movie tentacle monster, and um, because he goes in the car and and Kay's like talking to the dad in the foreground checking his papers. Then you see all the tentacles just going, Bruh! It's just like grab him. Yeah, like yeah but it's all done in yeah, it's all done in the in the background, like in in soft focus and stuff. Yeah, that, well, so I'm I'm at the park bench stuff. Oh, me too, moment, me but, too. Um, I think, Oh, okay, Something's good. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I did skip forward a little bit. I like the way it's revealed to him as well, that it's like, again, it's the mundanity of it all. It's like, he doesn't believe him. He hands him back the dossier. He's like, okay, see you later, crazy man. He's like, okay, you want a cup of coffee? And he just opens the thing. And there's these, what 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 convinces uh, Will Smith? What was Will Smith's character's name in this? Uh, he's going to be Jay. <laughs> it's Jay, but it's, yeah, I can't really tell. But anyway... And there's just like these aliens pouring coffee and spilling it everywhere and smoking fags and being just generally, <laughs> yeah. you know, they're like they're literally like teamsters or whatever. They're just like, hey, Seth, whatever. Well, they here. really use you know, those. They're... Those guys are in every version of Men in Black as well, which I really like. The little bug guys. Yeah. Dirty little rut bags. Like. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, but that's what kind of, um, yeah, I love all that sort of stuff. I think that's really, uh, oh, it's, great it's just world like, building, it's, isn't it? It's really lovely world building yeah. stuff. 
I think it's, it's so. Um, oh, James Edwards says Mr. Richie. So I think that's right. James Edwards is his name. Before he, before right. He okay. I love that he tries. He, he gets the lift with him, and he tries. He goes like, right. Here's how it's going to be. And, he, and what is it? He said he goes. He goes for right from precisely, <laughs> <dick>. precisely, <laughs> no, precisely <laughs> dick. And the doors open. Yeah, up. Everything at this point means <laughs> precisely <laughs> dick. This is a crazy. Oh, what, um, what I. Again, like the whole production design on this, I love. And it's the kind of, it's those kind of, it's something that they've, um, it's that World's Fair thing. It's the kind of 50s, 60s retro futurist aesthetic of very few straight lines. It's diagonal lines and curves, circles, so many circles in this film. The whole MIB headquarters is based around different versions of circles. Um, And it looks like something you know, but it's employed in a way you've never seen before, I think. I like to think. And everything's well. It's the sorry. It's the, so the actual quote is making the familiar unfamiliar and the unfamiliar familiar. Right. And I think that this film exemplifies that. Mm. You know, what I mean? yeah, because as you say, it's all these familiar looking things, but in an unfamiliar way. It's, it's kind of yeah. a th- it's something you mentioned earlier from Sam Mendes, which is something that I've talked about before. That's what I just said. That's, yeah, no, I mean. yeah, that's what. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But the other oh, the other way yeah. of phrasing that, it's not situ- just situations. It's um, people so ordinary people in extraordinary situations extraordinary people in ordinary situations and this right. this Absolutely. is that as well. the show the venture brothers is all about that because it's quite often you have like a superhero do a bunch of stuff and then they'll talk about how the inside of their mask smells of spit and you, you know what i mean like it's all those kind of things. it's it's the it's the blake lively recognizing uh how jordan because of his cheekbones were you know it's that it's that isn't it it's that, let's bring it all down to it. i mean it, it, it's abused i think in certain things but um, done it's something that when when it's done well because yeah. that's because ordinary people in extraordinary situations this is a really really good scene for that because the rank and file mib people like the one guy's <laughs> i love that guy the ball thing throws around and it goes through the whole of that guy's donut <laughs> It's right, such yes. a great, and also Zed is unfazed by the deadly thing flowing through his office. Yeah, because it's like tang tang tang. Yeah, because like, uh, uh, like, yeah, to him, it's, oh no, it's Rick Torn. Is it Rick Torn sat in his office in this? He's going, yeah, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Zed's just sat there going through yeah. some papers. It goes like dang, 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 around him, yeah. and also <laughs> to a degree, because when K catches it, he's you know he's put on the glove to get it, and he's just like, oh, yeah. yeah. All that stuff. I, oh, Stallone, of course, is in the montage of because it's the montage yes, of aliens. Because then they have like I think the <laughs> second one. This is the thing with MOB too, like because you know Michael Jackson is like I think they show Michael Jackson being alien in that montage. I can't remember, but then he plays an agent in Men in Black Two. Oh, and Men in Black yeah. Two is the whole. Of, oh, there's loads of things I really like in Men in Black Two, but it's just trying too hard. And it doesn't really seem. Whereas, like, Men in Black Three actually has a story to tell, and it's like, okay. Whereas, Men in Black Two is like, well, here's more of that in a hurry because it made loads of cash. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> well, it just, it's, it, you know, what Men in Black Three I think does, it does great character development, and it, and like you say, it has a story to tell. It has a point to make. It's not just a cash in, yeah. Which I think, I mean, I, do you know, I haven't really seen Men in Black Two properly. Like, I'm not really seeing it all the way through. I, see, I saw it like once um, when it came out, and then I've watched clips. I, I, because I was so kind of like, fair, you know. I, <laughs> and I, do you know what? I love Ros- Rosario Dawson, someone I really, really like. Um, and she's in that, and hey, great. But also, mm. fair. <laughs> you know, fair. It's weird to watch this now because you've got like, like Stallone, and that's like a contemporary Stallone at the time, mm. and it's like. Running. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably still like fifty, but still. It's like, oh, can I? Hmm, can I just? <laughs> may I just do a Rocky sidebar real quick? That's Please okay. do. Please do. So, did you hear about the Rocky Four? Um, the Rocky Four. The, re- the yeah, the, the, the cut. director's cut. Yeah, um, yeah, not director's cut, but the loan cut. Well, right. well, he was the director, so yeah, you know, director's cut. Oh yeah, of course. Sorry. Yes. Um, oh, yeah. Well, I found someone. It seems that he's posting little things on his Instagram or something, and someone on YouTube has, has put that into like eleven minute compilation of all his stuff, and it really is like this real. Firstly, Stallone, bless him, he keeps having work done, and now he looks sort of looks like an Italian American version of Crichton from Red Dwarf, but that's that is what that is. He's kind of filming all this stuff of him in the editing suite and in in the kind of sound mastering booth and stuff doing all the stuff for uh for the rocky four cut and and it really is from what i could got, got from that video 
a very top to bottom re-edit of that movie and he's getting old footage out and stuff. It's not just like he's dumped some more scenes in, but it's like we're doing the whole thing from scratch. Rocky Four's a very short movie. But I would say this time and time again, like he starts like he starts talking about Frank Capra and stuff to the camera. Like he's a really really knowledgeable filmmaker and he's he, and he, he's a, yeah, yeah. I, I think he's quite a skilled filmmaker as well and there's bits of him kind of the guys trying to do the edits and it's really funny because like uh Stallone's wearing like a tight black t-shirt and he's standing in front of the monitor going like you're behind you're behind and he's just like jk simmons in whiplash and it's like it's just <laughs> some weird alternate version hey you know i'm not my tempo <laughs> yeah, yeah no, but you, he keeps saying he's behind and it's like say say tempo sly Say tempo, <laughs> but I'm I'm really interested. I love Rocky Four. Really interested to see it, and and I go into bat for Stallone as a as a legitimate filmmaker time and time again, and and watching those, he's, he do. talks very intelligently about what he's doing. I, you know. My my, but that that's what makes his kind of ego trip shitty phase all the more egregious. I think more over and above the Schwarzeneggers and near everyone else because it's like yeah, he's a competent. Mm. You know, he can write the shit out of a script. He understands the he, filmmaking. He made some. He made bad choices, and I think because he was. Yeah. But hey, look, this is one of the things I went in with Rocky Balboa because Rocky Balboa is the beginning of the Stallone comeback, and it's really self-reflexive. That film, he's talking about himself, and it's beautiful. It's a really beautiful movie, and it's it, it's a real point in that guy's life. So, hey, anyway, this shit, man. Look at this. Shit. I don't know if you're where I am, but it's all this. It's this is like. <laughs> it's like it's just he's losing control and it's like when you see his face when he goes like we just got, he needs to drive off and he just goes <laughs> because it's like when you see the bug like obviously later on when it rips all the skin off or something it's fucking huge and it's like crammed into this yes dude and it's yeah and i love that as well because like when it. he because that him coming out of edgar's skin it's what he's wanted <laughs> yeah. to do for the whole movie. And D'Onofrio, because <laughs> yeah. but, but, but at that point, he's a VFX gag, right? Yeah. But up to that point, it's... <laughs> it's like, it's every time I see him, I laugh. Up to that point, it's all been D'Onofrio and Rick Baker. And yeah. fuck me, is it good? Like, fuck me, is it good? Yeah. Also, the guy, um, the dude's assistant is Lurch from Adam's Family, obviously. Like, how many, how many people look like that? Yeah. So this right. is I love I love the whole deal with these aliens, right? Because it's such a brilliant idea. Because you never would have seen it coming, like because the one at the beginning, the Mexican guy, where it's a head on a stick, <laughs> and he's like, yeah, know, yeah. The fact that they're piloting robot bodies and the alien lives inside the head, and it's because when he puts yeah. the stinger through and stuff, you don't necessarily know what's going on. But it's like a little guy in a chair, and it's like. Yeah. But they, and that's another thing this film does actually, um, and it's something they kind of try and do in the second one, and it doesn't really work as well. This film is kind of three dimensional in that it plays with your expectations of scale, and these this species in particular are little dudes inside a skin suit robot, but then we find out that actually galaxy, you know, you can compress a galaxy to a marble, and it's inside. Mm-hmm. So you know the galaxies on orion's belt which by the way i still think is rubbish like no one calls a collar a belt <laughs> like no one in the world goes. but anyway you know the, the idea and then at the end of the movie we get the twist that the milky way galaxy is in a marble being and we're all still in exactly a, yeah, all in so the, all these th- yeah. things about kind of expectation of scale the fact that the whatever edgar is, is inside the man but the thing itself is much bigger and the, co- the size is played with a lot in this film in a in a clever way well, and look, you've got even there, you know, you've got Lurch and the tiny guy, you know, and they're, they're both aliens of the same size. They're just occupying exactly different bodies, exactly. right? And um, I love, yeah, this is this is how I know about pierogi, which are Polish dumplings, right. in case anyone's wrong. Right. Um, Ashley Gay, I must say, because I've, I've, I've been trying to, yeah, waiting for a point. He gave us £10 on, on PayPal oh, and says, what's up? What's up, witches? Enjoy the productive break. He oh, says. So thank you very well, again, much. Those of you on Patreon, we, we've lined up some stuff for you. We will we will entertain yeah. you whilst we break, and then we'll be back on YouTube in a couple of weeks. Are you not entertained? <laughs> Are you not entertained? Mine turns into my my Russell Crowe turns into your Jason Statham, which is I just end up going <laughs> Megalodon. <laughs> ah, <laughs> That's a Megalodon. <laughs> Sorry.
<laughs> the two things that I just... I don't know why that, for some reason, is so easy to say, as Jason it's... Statham did. <laughs> look at him, look at him, fucking look. But he's like... <laughs> and he's got a fucking streak coming out of his... I mean, just genius. Like It is just genius. And letting him do it. It's, and I love the camera angle on that as well, when he's just like... <laughs> and, and the thing comes out and just stabs him in the neck. And, yeah... It's just so... He's like, rawr, like smashing tables. They and... do a lot of... Uh, some, again, something else I think the, the kind of magic of this film. And yeah, that's right. I have no criticisms. It's brilliant. Um, apart from that bit of dialogue about Ryan's belt, which doesn't make any sense. Anyway, um, <laughs> what I like is that everything is constantly hiding in plain sight all the time. And if it looks like it might I... be an alien or a spaceship, it is an alien or a spaceship. It's that... <laughs> Sorry, man. Right. Yes, you're absolutely right. And I'm laughing at the fact that he, he's like, when he walks out of the restaurant, he's trying to be like subtle. And he's like, yeah, no, no. and he sees the guy and he goes. He's constantly like this, isn't he? He's pressing his chin into his chest. Like, yeah, and it's just like, it's just like. Oh, <laughs> great bit of stage makeup as well, because it decays. It's yes, crazy. yeah, yeah. It progressively gets worse and worse and worse, doesn't it? It's a dying, rotting corpse. Um, and it's one of those that's another film conceit of like if you just put someone's skin over you you'll look like them yes <laughs> kind of <laughs> kind of because <laughs> actually cause yeah. like, one thing that struck me is like when um, you've seen Full Metal Jacket right of course years ago so, yeah like, and I don't remember it very well but I know obviously Vinny D'Onofrio is and in he's it very, I think he's probably 20 something he's young hmm. Uh, and he's quite, you know, that character is a bit overweight, and that's part of what what's what. Um, in this movie, he's he's not, you know, the, and, and and in Dark Days as well, he's kind of a bit slender. When he walks out as Edgar for the brief few seconds of him as Edgar, I was kind of like, fuck, look how young Vincent Nofrio looks. And then he goes in yeah. the hole and comes out as the. And it's like, oh, oh god, yeah, they really, <laughs> they really make it's him. A number of... The thing is, he does look. He obviously loves that. He's not. He's not overweight in this like no absolutely quite, not um, no 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 like when you see him yeah. as him he's quite slim and yeah. everything um but, but yeah it's when he walks they've done such a good job of like sinking his eyes and stuff when he kind of comes out oh yeah that's fantastic i love i love all the things like basically will smith gets covered in shit all the time <laughs> like like they, they, they spit up on him he's like <laughs> like there's just so i, I just think yeah like, <laughs> there's so many great um Great gags with him of like I love one of my favourite things in this film is at the end when they're like this giant spaceship crashes to Earth and it's like coming towards them and he just he's there standing there with the guns looking cool and he just goes like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's just like that's such a nice it's all I that, that dude all that <laughs> dry <laughs> stuff and these two because this is the yeah. anti this is the fucking anti um, Tommy Lee Jones and Jim Carrey isn't it because clearly it worked with these guys yeah. and they come back and did it three times um, yeah that's true. Yes, that's great chemistry. This is. I love even just it, again. It's timing though. It's that thing of him like when he's sat in the car, covered in babysitting, like alien babysitting, and Tommy Lee Jones is trying to be, and he's just like looks at him, and then they drive <laughs> off. You know, and it's just like, that's that's comedic timing that you only get if you've got a really clear visual eye in your head. And then it's like every time as well, you cut away from a scenario like that. There's no indication that it's in the, it's another day, mm. but they're both completely clean. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like that's the thing. That's the thing about like if you're a man in black, you always turn up clean, right? It doesn't matter what happened to you in the previous thing. Like you could covered in alien goo, you're always like pristine. Yeah, the next exactly. place you, you get. It's the last suit you'll ever wear, yeah. Duncan, and it always looks good. That's it. That's the... <laughs> this is. Uh, I'm a bit ahead of you, but when they go to see Edgar's wife, <laughs> firstly the day they're there now. I might. Um, oh, okay. I think the we're... decor in the house. You know, just it's this weird beige Norman Bates house where it's all this gross wallpaper and stuff. And also, like, where Will Smith just rambles at her and she's snapped out of it and he's like dissing her lemonade and stuff. And he just keeps yeah. going and going and going. And, it, <laughs> and she's great. She's got such a small role, but she does that kind of thing where she. <laughs> 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 And the thing, yeah, but do you know what that's calling back to is the fact that it probably doesn't have any sugar in it. Yes, yeah. Because she yeah. put sugar in Edgar's uh, mm. thing. That's probably what it is. Sure yeah, not. but again, that's a really great. It's just like fuck the tart, you know, because it's got no sugar. Because Edgar drank all the sugar. But um, <laughs> but um, but I like but 
Yeah, look at him. He's like showing him. Like, he shows him a picture of him. He's like, yeah, that's great. Right. Like, <laughs> standing in a swamp with a gun. It's just like, right. <laughs> and again, like, that's a pretty slim looking Vinny, isn't it? That, you know, when he's, he's, yeah. he's looking. He's looking as good as a man yeah. can in, in waders, a plaid shirt and a shotgun, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> but um, again, it's that, and I love the way, like, she, she does such a great performance in this as well, because she's just like, you know, there's a skin suit. It's all just like yeah. really just plain and down. That's one of those, like, uh, um, just pitch perfect supporting roles that you know because obviously the temptation is to try and play it up and be notable but it's like no 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 in service of the story this is what you've got to do it's got to be boom 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 and she nails it absolutely oh i did hear i um, i just want to um so i, I mentioned floyd dylan again floyd 75 dylan's hmm. full name when we announced barry sonnenfeld he said um <clears throat> oh barry sonnenfeld started out as a cinematographer on porn and I was like, "Shit, okay." We, hey, look, you know, industry. It happens. I, I've never Wally Fiskel as well, I think. Which is uh, what? Sorry, good name, Wally Fiskel. <laughs> which is, yeah. Wally Fiskel. <laughs> I hardly <laughs> knew. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but I'd, I'd never, I'd never heard that before. So I looked into it, and yeah. the only source I can find is a Guardian interview from 1999 that passingly mentions okay. it, and I'm sure it's, you know probably true i whatever but um yeah so floyd thank you for that because i just sort of did a i'd say a, sh- a, a medium dive it certainly wasn't a deep dive but that's the only source i could find but it would appear it's true and again he as a younger man he was cinematographer and he did stuff for the Coens. he was mates with bill pope at school blah blah blah, blah. but it seems to be a thing uh you know that's the only source i can find for it that's where it's traced back to and, mm. it, and it's in those kind of tedious top 10 lists and stuff um I love these. I love all the things that, like, all the gadgets they've got, like the Earth thing that just has lights on it that mean nothing. Lights and chrome. That mean everything. Lights and chrome. Yeah, but it's that thing. <laughs> lights and chrome. It's that thing of like, this is supposed to be technology we just don't understand, but it's lo-fi. Mm. But yeah, yeah, but obviously does extraordinary things, and it's kind of like you wouldn't buy that. Like nowadays, if they try to do that with something, you'd be like shut up like that would have a big screen and, th- and you see it in subsequent men in black films where it's like now it has to have a holographic screen or it has to have like a you know what i mean whereas it's like in this it's just a thing you go well i guess that means something to him because we're on the outside of this we're technically you know and even as an audience you go like have we been neuralized at some point <laughs> yes this? you know yeah, you can't right. trust necessarily it's what like you're fucking watching. primer or something <laughs> it's like yeah. can i really see i don't know are you, are you at the morgue yet? yeah yeah, right, something to watch here, right? Watch that. Watch the morgue. Yeah, everything is square, mm-hmm. with very few exceptions. There are squares everywhere. There, I think the scales are circular. But remember the MIB headquarters, the enlightened people. Everything's a circle. Boring society. Mm. Everything's a square or a check. And it's this really ah. involved art design. Like, think about that. That's not just sort of like put some wallpaper up. The entire black wall- walls are great green and square. Square slabs, square, uh, you know, drawers, everything's square. I think the scales are circular. Uh, square lights, like it's the whole thing is. It's very subtle, but it's fucking deliberate. It's really clever, deliberate. Well, the scales are balanced, aren't they? So you could argue that's a sort of right. So the needles they, in the they, middle, right? Like yeah, yeah, they're balanced, and then they, yeah, everything. Yeah, you're so right. As it's well. dude yeah. again. Movies directed by cinematographers. Like that, you know. I really yeah. like Transcendence, by the way. I should probably watch it again. Everybody hated Transcendence, but I really liked it. I saw it at the cinema, and I was like, "This is like watching Demon Seed or something." It's like watching a nineteen seventies. There are some really st- stupid things in Transcendence, like I was right. Cillian Mur- or Killian Murphy plays like an FBI guy, and there's a bit where he's wearing sunglasses and he puts binoculars up to his eyes, and it's like, well, no. No, <laughs> definitely not that. Don't do that. <laughs> but, but look, at the time I liked it, I saw it when it came out, and I was like, "This is all right. This is a cool 1970s yeah. premise, and it looks good." Because what you know, Wally Fisher directed a movie. Cut the man a break. I mean, you know, studio cut him like probably millions of dollars, but cut him a break. Um, I, yeah, people forget. I think I guess because because films are so sort of readily consumed, and I and I get it. And it's like it's not that it's invalid, but it's that thing of like you you no idea what it takes to make a film. 
you could just to make something even sort of coherent. You know, obviously Martin and I had this sort of chat last night. You know, I mean, um, I think he kind of got thrown in the deep end with the critics. You know, because that was just by virtue of the fact that it, it got a theatre to release uh, Wicked Witches and stuff like that, and um, opened us up to. You know, we had a review in the LA Times and that kind of thing, and. Uh, and so you know and, and do you know what most of them were favorable i think i mean i like i said i try not to read read them but i invariably do like an idiot and um and i shouldn't uh because you know it's, it's one of those things where you probably go like most of them are glowing but there'll be one or two that go like mm, casey's wrong and i'll go like oh, my career is that was, that was me you know, as well i wrote that <laughs> that was richard yeah in the, in the, in the jackson chronicle, the jackson chronicle. Uh, yes <laughs> yes i photocopy it and hand it to ivan once a week. Super silly as fuck. Anyway, um, that's my impression. Good, very good, yes. Terrible. You turned him into Noel <laughs> Coward, I think. <laughs> yes, yes. Someone has broken into my toilet and handed me the Jackson And Bond. made me eat my toilet. <laughs> and then James Bond stopped by because I'm friends with in <laughs> that's not how that's not, don't count that <laughs> Come, ca- carry on carry on I apologize uh, brief tangent oh, there brief God. all too brief uh, but, but long enough that I forgot what the fuck I was talking um, uh, oh yeah so yeah um <laughs> making a film is fucking hard I don't care who you are you know like alright if you've got studio money behind you that's one thing but then you're beholden to people you've got shit to do you can't like you know um, I, I work at the end where people either fund it themselves or they get you know they get funding but it's not like mega bucks and um, you know it's like you realise as well just how much gets squandered on stuff like at the moment you know you're talking 20 30 grand on just COVID compliance on anything and that's on a small production before you even then um, brave new world it's a brave new world john yeah so it's you know this is this is what happens unfortunately you know it's nothing it, it, you know it's fine but it is what it is but um my point being is that like just remember that next time you go like, it's a fucking shit film it's like don't be wrong films can be shit like i get it and films can be sort of complacent and lazy and um but they can also be you know you, you have to understand like some people embark on these things like I, I i guess before you watch an indie film and sort of say those effects are shit and you're all shit and your mum dresses you funny and fuck you and the horse you rode in on like remember that this isn't you know, like I, like I find like with Wicked Witches as well. People, what what was odd about it was people were judging it on the basis of like some people were taking huge political issue with it. Some people were taking issue with creative choices, and it's like we didn't have much. We, like there weren't any choices to be made. This was made uh, for was that, no that money. Was shot on, you, you got shot on DSLR, right? Or no? Yeah, on a five D, I think. Five D, right? Because I uh, saw I saw some BTS from that, and I reckon something. <laughs> That much of a fucking loser that I, I recognise the cameras when I see them now, and also the rig, because it's the same shoulder rig that I have that Martin was shooting on, and I recognise that, and I just wondered. And some of it. Well, he had also he had a Ronin, and he had different things, but um, and also we had the benefit of those aerial shots, but that was only because of people Martin knew. It wasn't. I think he paid them, but it wasn't like we had to make a budget. But they happened to have this octocopter thing which could carry a Ronin with an electromagnet. Yeah, sure. That's why a lot of like we did huge aerial shots that came down into like did one takes that came down into things that went into buildings and all that and unfortunately we had to cut around that because um, various things went wrong um, which is annoying because it was those were all done as one take and when you see the film it's like it doesn't look like it. Uh, but anyway, Let, but there he you go, was without that's, sin cast the first stone. That's increasing that's in my view. Uh, it's all well and good to which see we, him, but. but... We, we are to embark on filmmaking soon as a, as a duo, but between us, we've certainly made enough. It's very films exciting, by the way. We've got, we've we got can cast many enthusiastic stone. talk from the location this week, which is very exciting. That's exciting. Yes, I'm very excited by that. Actually. Um, it does mean that I have to now build a thing that I can't tell you about. We secured cast as well, which is we've got wonderful. cast, we've got crew, we've almost got the location. It's exciting. I mean, securing cast. Okay, yeah. there are two people. 
<laughs> there are two people in it. One of you. And if you said no, we'd be fucked because you're producing it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to. It looks rubbish. <laughs> no, the money's not good enough. I'll just argue myself. Oh fuck! You're paying yeah. yourself in some takeaway in an indiscriminate number of months. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> Take away. We've got a, we've got a, um, a super chat from James Morgan. Uh, Did you want to read it? Sure. Uh, he says, Evening, gents. I hope you're both well. Are there any films that either of you are looking forward to seeing this year? I like Christopher Walken. <laughs> Only the movies by Christopher Walken. Yeah. <laughs> the rest... I don't care. <laughs> I, quite like, I quite like the idea of septuagenarian Christopher Walken sending super chats to a YouTube channel. So just watch the, the movies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's my nom de plume. <laughs> oh my yeah. god! Yeah. I don't know what's coming out. I can tell you what I watched last weekend. I mean, No Time to Die obviously is coming. Um, yeah. but I feel like I've completely because everything's been kicked down the all the cans have been kicked down the road so I don't even remember what's happening I don't even know well, either it's coming out or nothing is coming yeah, out yeah, everything or nothing you, <laughs> uh, yeah indeed right I don't because the last again the last movie I saw was fucking 1917 at that beautiful cinema at the Lux in, in Whiz Beach which I've already kind of waxed lyrical about beautiful cinema um I, I tell you what I did watch. I watched um, Willy's Wonderland with Nicolas Cage at the weekend. Have you heard about that? That's the one where Nicolas Cage is uh, trapped in a haunted... Uh, not a haunt. Yeah, a haunted... You know those... Uh, I can't remember what they're called. There's a, there's a video game called Five Nights at Freddy's, which is based on a thing called Chuck E. Cheese in America, where there's those restaurants where they have animatronic robots that sing to the kids. And it's... Like Megatron, but he said, "Well, it's, it's the Simpsons thing." Like Happy Birthday, <laughs> right? <laughs> Boy, oh, well, like, right. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, there's Willy, Willy's Wonderland was a kind of low budget. It was a short that Nicolas Cage liked, and he got made into a feature. Well, he helped make into a feature where he stars as a guy who's hired to clean up this kind of busted up old restaurant. And uh, I really liked it. It was really fun. It was a really good fun time. It's it's on Prime. It is on a it's on a streaming service which I have access to. I think it was on Prime, and it was really fun. Okay. It was a really fun kind of eighties horror movie. It's quite derivative, but I see no problem with that if you do that well. And um, and Nicholas Cage is mute for the entire film. Right. Okay. I, I fucking really liked it. It was a really fun kind of for horror movie concept. Uh, it didn't outstay its welcome. It was silly, but it was kind of gross. Yeah. Nick Cage gets ragged on a lot nowadays, but. Um... You know, and I don't say this because technically I'm in a film of his, but um, the dude, the, I, 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 I was quite dismissive of him for a time, and then I, we, I, um, in one of her fits of finding crap films, my wife actually found a film uh, of his with, you know, because it was so for so long she'd be like, but Nicolas Cage is in it, and I'm like, that's <laughs> hardly the mark of quality, but the dude's still great. Like, I mean, like a lot of the stuff that I've seen him in, like including Grand Isle, which I'm in, but also. Um, all the other stuff, which Kelsey Grammer's in as well, by the way, who just announced that they are bringing back Frasier, um, which is cool. I'm excited to see what that's going to yeah, be. Yeah, I've been um, through the chat was saying earlier that um, we're not going to get um, Niles, uh, David Hyde Pierce. Pierce. Um, well, no, that's not been confirmed, but they. Oh, okay. I mean, I'm I sure just saw that in our chat. It. It hey, look. I doubt David Hyde Pierce is like. That busy, uh, well, yeah, you know, I mean, but maybe he's comfortable, he did, probably just doesn't have to. I mean, he's, he's doing some great things. Did you see the um, what's the what's it called, the perfect guest or house guest or whatever it's called? Uh, the sort of horror film he did that was really hey, good. I fucking David Hope Pierce is amazing. That like, I, yeah. I, hey, whatever Frasier thing happens, I'm gonna watch because Frasier's amazing and I love it. And I just, <laughs> but of course, no more, uh, no more, no more Marty, you know. That's, that's no, very no, very sad. Um, um, someone was like, well, that means we don't get Eddie. It was like, you know, that's a dog, right? <laughs> I mean, I don't think we were getting Eddie. If they anyway. revived it five years later, we wouldn't have got Eddie. <laughs> you know, let's not. I don't think that's the issue. It ran like what? How long was it? Like, it was like 12 10 years? 10 or 12 seasons, I think. It was a long ass. Yeah, it's like you weren't getting. I mean, you were lucky to get Eddie. 
it assumes that Eddie was basically a puppy in the <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. The... He was born in the first episode. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, um, I had a really, what was it? Who was I? I had to chat with my pal, um, uh, who was it? Okay. This is now really boring because I can't remember who it was. <laughs> okay. Forget it. Ellis. Oh, it was Ellis. It was Ellis. So my mate Ellis, who I did uh, measure for measure with, was he and I were swapping things about. Like he put a thing up about, it was to do with. Um, again, I don't want to get political, but it was to do with that people talking about gay people playing gay roles and everything. And we got into the thing about like because so much, so many of the cast of Frasier, there were these in real life reversal things, and it was like, um, who played what was his name? Who was the actor's name who played Martin or Marty? Uh, oh, yeah, his name was he was from he's English, did you know that? Yeah, he, was he, like, he yeah, left yeah. Manchester when he was quite young, but yeah, uh, yeah, I can't remember his name. Someone in the chat will know. He was, he and David Hyde Pierce are gay in real life, and they both used to swap stories because um, he was into opera and David Hyde Pierce was into like baseball and right. drinking beer. John, Mah- John Mahoney swap- says James. John Mahoney. Mahoney, thank you, brilliant, thank you guys. Yeah. Um, I, I'm so, I feel really bad I can remember his name but they both apparently on set used to swap stories and it was like because obviously both their characters were supposed to be into other stuff like the guy who played Bulldog was gay in real life and he was this sort of we would woof after you know he's like his alpha yeah, male yeah, quote yeah, unquote like so... you know that whole thing I just love all that I, don't, I you know not I, I, in a way it's, it doesn't mean anything but in a, you know in another way it was just like a really nice sort of thing about that show which was like it was just the whole th- that whole thing managed to be wholesome funny it's just so it's just subversive. so witty it's so witty, witty. I, I just you remember the Derek Jacobi episode Do you remember that one That's yes so, yeah was, so yeah. good they put all that effort into yeah. getting him on stage it's like oh no he's he's terrible and he was always terrible <laughs> and we, we've like staked our whole reputation because <laughs> wasn't the thing was that he was basically played a c-3po type character yeah, that was what he was, he known was in like a junk sci-fi thing so they picked him up at like a uh, <laughs> sci-fi convention and That's then right. he they remember him coming to their like swanky private school and doing shakespeare and they remembered it being amazing and um <laughs> Just go, <laughs> yeah. They thought it was some vocal warm up, but actually that's his whole. It's completely and... dreadful, and they have to like go through it. It's oh, it's they're so like, good. <laughs> they're in the wings, just doing this, and he's going. Whoa! It's so yeah, that's brilliant, right. man. It's so fucking that, brilliant because it's all about hubris. That whole thing is with those with those characters. It's just like you two, and they don't. In a way, it's 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 weird because you're kind of watching people who don't learn. They're constantly hoisted by their own petard, and yet... Oh, it's, it's learn, brilliant but... high farce. It's brilliant high farce. Yeah. Also, I'm a big fan of Cheers as well. Like, I love Cheers before <laughs> that. Um, and Frasier does a different yeah. thing. Frasier has its own identity. but Because, you know, Frasier... Has, it's probably one of the most successful spin-offs ever, right? I think it ran longer than Cheers did. Um, I think it... Yeah. Did, and yeah. and also reviving Frasier does give a bit of scope to perhaps bring some Cheers characters back again because you know most of them had a Frasier cameo didn't they the, a lot of the Cheers lot yeah I mean. yeah Ted Danson did and, um, oh Shelley Woody Long Harrelson. did Woody Harrelson did like, I think yeah. yeah oh um just here's my here's my bit of trivia in my own little niche um Frank the Pug we all know Frank the Pug from Men in Black um mm-hmm. who who got who gets weird tr- I think. I can't remember if they shoehorned Frank the Pug into um, Men in Black International. So I don't remember a lot about that film because it was rubbish. You might have, yeah. But um, he's yeah. he's voiced by Tim Tim Blaney, who was the voice of uh, Johnny Five in the Short Circuit movies. Oh wow! Which, okay, very cool. I really love Short Circuit too. It has a very problematic amount of brownface, which is any amount of brownface actually is a problematic amount of brownface. <laughs> well, yeah, because yeah, you didn't realise what's his name. What, I can't remember, the Indian characters guy is that like, he's a white. No, he's actor, what's his name? He? He's um. Ah, Oh, it's got out of my head because now I have to remember it. He's from Hackers. He's in California. And Cal- oh. He's in California. He was in- he's, he's, he's a, he's a masturbating producer. It, he was in Colombo as well. He was in Colombo. Ah, oh, was he? Really? Shit. Everybody knows his name. Anyway, but he was um he was a, a bunch of people mistook him for uh, Java. Uh, is it Java Jaffrey? Like like a, a Indian actor. Loads of white people thought he was him, and it wasn't because he right. did bless him. Fisher Stevens. Fisher Stevens. 
Fisher Stevens. That that's role. It. He does a great job. It's not to well, take anything is, away he, from him, and I don't he think really he really studied it. it. No, he really studied it. Yeah. He really studied the culture and the background and stuff. And then when you watch it, it's like, oh, this is like it ain't off hot mum. Oh no. Um, but I, yeah, it's not. I, it's not malicious. It's not malicious, but it's definitely kind of like, yeah, that doesn't really fly anymore. Um, however, no, yeah. Short Circuit Two is kind of my warm fuzzy place to go to. Um, but I can't imagine. In some ways, I can't imagine. I mean, obviously, now in the <laughs> whatever. But I mean, yeah, I can't imagine someone else doing doing it like that in a way because it is so nice like his he's his character is it's, really the whole film whole... is insanely sweet i think because when um when i was yeah. around my so I, as i said many times in the lead up I, I had to quarantine for two weeks before i saw my folks on christmas day and uh, and neither of them have died so it worked um, <laughs> um right. we watched batteries not included in short circuit two on christmas day because that was those were staples for us when we were kids and that was a nice i used to love short circuit too and i and i don't really remember it very much now but um i went to watch it i think it was on netflix or something i went to watch it and it was just in four by three and looked awful and i was like i can't watch this that, that's so just that's like my but, fucking tango and cash thing when it was a four by three it's like yeah. what are you fucking doing i paid to rent this the fuck yeah, right? um yeah it's like you have chosen standard definition. <laughs> so, yeah, that doesn't mean I want to see it in like a TV from the eighties. Yeah, uh, so like, it's like yeah. Zoe trope. You cunts! Like, don't fuck. <laughs> what is a man going to come and rotate a bit of cardboard tube in front of my eyes through a candle? <laughs> <laughs> fuck off! <laughs> it's interesting you said about eyes actually in this because now you you brought up that thing about things flashing and eyes. Obviously, here I don't know where you're at, but when she's looking at Orion's belt, her eyes are lighting up and stuff like that. And it's like doing things to people's eyes is a big deal in this. Yeah, it's, a, it's an eye and exam, right? Got... It's an eye exam, the neural eyes. Yeah, and you, you've also got the kind of thing of Edgar doesn't have eyes. Technically. It's a thing looking through, you know, all the aliens are looking through fake eyes. Yeah. You know, yeah, like little of... kind of, there's, there's stuff going on in this movie, man. I, I, his what's his name is the David the Cross. Reception. David, quite David a young Cross. David Cross, yeah. Which is really, yeah. He, what is it? He goes like, Thanks. You, what is it? He goes like, "Thanks, you proved the bell works or whatever." Because he's like, "Ding, ding, 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 ding." Yeah, ding. yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Again, modernity, isn't it? It's that thing of like, I'm just at my day job. Fuck, what do you want? Like, you know, and it's it's just like, don't do that. It's like, what? He's in Small Soldiers don't. as well. Do you remember Small Soldiers? The Joe Dante. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, the Joe Dante <laughs> movie, Small Soldiers, with top with Tommy Lee Jones actually. Weirdly, he yeah, plays a, yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's, he's in that. Book. I love it. It's a pet cat. <laughs> <laughs> it's well, sweet. Oh, I like it. And it's like his eyes are rotting. Yeah. yeah. One of them is rotting. He's got the milky oh, it's eye. again because it's well, that's just, that's that thing of like because he's not really looking through them, you know. So like, and it's yeah, brilliantly done. Sorry, yeah, yeah. yeah it's also uh, yeah. It's uh, Tommy Lee Jones is the voice in that, with David Cross is in that as well in a similarly weird small role. Small soldiers, I wish I liked more, particularly as a Joe Dante movie. And I think this is very, very planted in the Joe Dante school of filmmaking. Joe Dante, uh, in the film Matinee with, with uh, the great John Goodman is because mm. Gremlins and the Burbs and all these Joe Dante movies did, you know, he, here's me looking back at the fifties, whereas Matinee is like, this is literally set. It, it's supposed to be about William Castle. It's about the fifties B movement. It's about nuclear panic. Like, like he literally goes and does that as a film mm. and no one talks about matinee by the way that's a thing that i saw a bunch as a kid because i think it failed massively so it went straight to television in england very quickly so we could watch it and mm. all. it's about a, a fictional film called mance so it's a film within a film um he's doing that very on the nose and small soldiers i you know it's frustrating because sports i think small soldiers was 99 and it came out after this and it's a joe dante movie yeah. and this this out dante's dante and I would say also uh, the the original Adams Family movie was intended for Tim Burton, and uh, the director of that, the producer of that, I, oh God, I, I want to say Scott Rudin, but I could be wrong. It could be Dave David Rubin. I can't remember which one it is. It couldn't get Tim Burton, and instead of moving on to the next name director, it took a chance on a cinematographer, that being Barry Sonnenfeld, and did that. And that film, as far as I'm concerned, the Adams Family movies out Tim Burton, Tim Burton. And this this one out yeah. Dante's Dante for my money. Fair, that's fair. You know? Yeah, no, I, I think that's a that's a really good assessment. I love this. I love this as well. Like, like we're so oblivious to what the fuck she's like. Something I need you to look at. And he's just like, <laughs> and he's like, 
You must mean your yes. vagina. He's, such, he's, no, a, no. he's a horny dickhead. Like, he doesn't get it. Yeah. <laughs> She's and then going you, like... you've even got, like, you've even got Edgar under the thing going, oh. <laughs> <laughs> It's so good. And then the guy's just, like, plastered to the ceiling in goo, right? Yeah, there's, a, yeah. there's a great bit you'll come, you'll come to in a minute, that. like, after the chase. When they come back for the MIB headquarters, they walk in the door, and the kind of entrance mm. hall, it's really, it's kind of weirdly sinister. It's geometric shapes again. But it's just sur- the wall is painted with silhouettes of people, and they enter through this kind of oval. And for no discernible reason, there's this thing of them just being observed by these kind of shadowy people on the wall. And it's a great yeah. kind of thing about the sort of paranoia in it and stuff. But it's just a little thrown away thing. So the art design in Sonnenfeld films, and it's the same thing. It's the same thing with them. Um, Get Shorty and all its kind of Get Shorty's kind of uh, let's look at Hollywood. You know, movies about movies. If you're gonna do Joe Dante doing matinee talking about William Castle and stuff, like, like then look at There's lots of well there's lots of silhouettes. Like in Get Shorty there's silhouette stuff like where you've got Travolta and um Rene Rousseau silhouetted in deck chairs, like, you know, and that's the first time they kiss and stuff and there's mm. loads of there's oh, loads beautiful. of like it's using... so nice that bit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, because and again it's that Hollywood again, it's like are we watching that's what the thing I say with that film is like, are we watching the actual story or are we watching the f- filmed story as told by hit uh, as told by chili palmer because it's like that thing of it some of it's so idyllic and hollywood eyes mm. that you kind of go are we watching the actual film that chili palmer's telling us or are we watching the events that led to because i know at the end then you actually see the film I love made, transition but, at the end. but is it like a, is that another level exactly down is that inception so thing because he's got like that yeah. is it like a desert eagle with a laser sight on it and stuff at the yeah, end? yeah yeah and it's, and it's just it, it, it's just, it, it's just his cameo of um uh harvey Keitel with like a nose stuck on his face <laughs> and it's just like well and he just turns around and goes fuck you fuck boy and then the like the magazine falls out of and it's so good. I love the noisy cricket thing because he gives him the noisy cricket and it's like, this is where you find out what it does, right? And he's just like, stab! And he fires it and it like just flies, it throws him back and you've got that Will Smith thing where he lands and the guy goes, and it gets back up. And it's just, I I love stuff like that. Again, subversion, right? The smallest thing makes Precisely, the biggest noise. Precisely, yeah. The smallest thing makes the biggest noise. Yeah. And it's, it's not what you expect and Will Smith is your surrogate for that because he's kind of like, what the fuck is this? And he's actually entrusted him with a very dangerous weapon. Yeah, and yeah, and that's the point, it. isn't it? That's the whole, you know, that's this whole thing. Is it's like I'm giving you, you don't know, like, and it's, and that is a comment on life, isn't it? You don't know what you're being given. Mm. You don't know mm. the 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 power of what you have at your disposal. There you go, really shadowy yeah, it's people. Weird, on, right? And it's yeah. what well, that it tees up the painting of the two sources on sticks thing. I don't know what that is. Yeah, called. I think I heard, and I could be wrong, and this absolutely sounds like lazy Hollywood bullshit, but. I think they've. I think now they're saying Tim Burton's to Adam's family again, which I hate. I hate that. It's just obvious. It's isn't so it? obvious. Mm-hmm. And look, they tried that. He didn't fucking want it. And Barry Sonnenfeld just smashed it. Like Knocked fuck off. Part, like don't yeah. even try. I don't fucking want to see Johnny Depp as Gomez. Eat a dick. Like, I don't. Like it's like <laughs> I know you were in Dark Shadows, right? So I'm not. And I haven't seen it. But that's. It's all right. But, Okay, well, I, I, I don't, you know, I don't have an opinion on it, but because it's based on an old soap and stuff. But that yeah. be, being about a spooky family in a spooky house, it's like he's already done it. He's done it already. I, I yeah, it, it's obvious to me, and it's one of those things where I think if I were Tim Burton, I'd be going, "How can I make this film in a way that's not really obvious?" And that isn't that's not a good recipe for a good film. I mean, I, like I say, I. I I've seen Tim Burton in action actually working on a, on a production, you know, and oh. then technically I've been directed by him. We've had a super chat. I'm sorry. Re- I know. I just, I just had that highlighted on my screen to bring up in a second. Good, good, good. Good. Carry on, but, carry on, carry on. No, I just, just to say that, <clears throat> you know, the man works damn hard and he, and he knows what he wants and it's like, all right, he might make films that we don't always like, but I, I'll give him this. Like he, he got, he puts his heart and soul into, like I said, like on dark shadows, he was going around, dressing the set with bits of plastic dead fish. You know, I mean, the man is, he, I, from what I observed, he is dedicated to making exactly what he wants, which I guess is an indictment of him if you don't like what it is. But, I kind of feel um, like he should and, have been an art designer. Yeah. Like, I mean, I can, don't I get me wrong. Like, I've, fucking Ed Wood. I think Ed Wood is monolithic. I fucking love Ed Wood. 
and there's a couple of other mm. movies that I like, but like Edwards is just such a brilliant piece of work. And again, you know, I, I, look, I've got a boner for movies about movies, particularly that period. Um, but like that that film in particular, I think it's his best by a country mile. Can we read Eric's uh, chat? Eric Grunland sent us 50 Swedish kroner. So I many kroner say. today. All of the kroner. All Eric, the Eric, we haven't forgotten you. We love you. Duncan's going to read your thing. Yeah, more kroners than a best of Barry Manor. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, Warm up if you're going to stretch like that, mate. You're going to put your back out. Fuck it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, he says, maybe a list of Ben Stiller directed movies as candidates for future watch party on a Patreon vote later. Uh, love that idea, and we all know that the cable guy would win because. Do you one. know what? I and, well, there's a very good uh, segue into movies about movies because I I wanted to, I've talked about this before. I wanted to like Tropic Thunder more than I like Tropic Thunder because I felt like Tropic Thunder was there's loads of and Tropic Thunder has some really fucking great stuff in it, like some really funny yeah. shit. But the middle of Tropic Thunder just was oh, so slow. Like it just. Ba- yeah. Did, did he direct Zoolander as well? Did he direct Zoolander? Or... Ooh, I don't know. I don't know. I feel I don't like know. he did. Oh, I, well, that's a good... Eric, that's a good... That is a good... Uh, that's a good suggestion for a watch party list. And also just actors... Actors directing movies perhaps as well could be a good one. Um, or yeah. comedians directing yeah. movies. Like I, I, Yeah, The Cable Guy. I watched The Cable Guy when it came out and I hated it because... I was a teenager. It wasn't, it wasn't fucking Ace Ventura, and it wasn't fucking yeah. uh, The Mask. And then watching it later, I was like, actually, yeah, this is really, really good. Like, see, I came to it later, which is weird because I was a massive Jim Carrey fan as like a as a kid and a teenager and stuff, and then, um, or a young teenager, and then I don't know what age I was when I finally watched it, and I was like, I love this. Why does everyone hate it so much? Like, because it got kicked around town for so long, mm. and I was like, it was like the misstep. And I watched it. And it's like it's fucking hilarious. Like, it's brilliant. It's just not like you say. Like, it just does. Isn't. When I was that age and that came out, there was this hot streak of Jim Carrey stuff. We all fucking love Jim Carrey, and I wanted more kind of fart jokes and silly faces. And it's not mm. that. It's quite a sort of like it's got this it's tragic, weird, really tragic kind of. It is a comedy, but it's got a huge element of like psychological drama and like this thing of thing about obsession and you know kind of abandonment. It's really fucking cool, and I love. Well, and also the role of TV in like uh, he's a you know disassociated. Yeah, he's, yeah. Ch- he's this child raised raised uh, raised by TV, and all of his uh, references and all of his kind of touchstones and emotional development was based around television shows. Well, the whole thing as well is juxtaposed against essentially the O.J. Simpson trial, right? Because there's the the twins who murdered, so or like the twin. What's the? I can't remember. There's a trial going. Yeah, on and the they're play, they're both played by Stiller, which is a nice. They're both played by Stiller, and it's like the, the, they play that recording of like the nine one one call, or whatever, and it's just like he was talking. I don't know some kind of Asian, and it sounded. Asian. <laughs> it just keeps saying like Asian like a million times, and it's just him in court going. <laughs> um, but then at the end like with the verdict everyone's watching TV and he's just like has been found has been found and he just goes like bang into the dish and kills it Brilliant. for like hundreds of people and it's got like Kyle Gass in it and, oh yeah and that, it does you know, doesn't that, it yeah they're all watching TV yeah. here's my favourite bit hang on wait I, I mean you've probably seen it already but like obviously the dish crashes through the globe which is I guess symbolic and then it's just the way, which is a great effect, actually. That works really well. But then, yeah, when it hits the ground, it was just we like... we drifted so bad. What's your time code oh, just really? out of interest? Uh, 121.03. Your time code yeah. is ahead of mine! What's going That's on? That's really weird. For fuck's sake. We're going to have to... Okay, look, when we come back after the break, we'll have some kind of unified film thing happening. I promise. Yeah. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hey, look, you know... Uh, we've been talking about other things for a while now, so it's fine. It's better to be fine. It's fine. 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 Where are you at now? What's going on in your uh, world? Edgar is well out of his skin. He's climbing up the tower with Linda. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's just coming out of the thing. He's going, you idiot. Steve Ellis <laughs> says, Richard, did you know that Ben Stiller owns the original Gornhead from the original TOS episode uh, arena? I did know that. Yeah, still is a big Star like Trek that. fan. Yeah, Duncan knew that. that Duncan, a, told, that Duncan a... told me that, actually. No, did no, I? That's not true. <laughs> that was just a, that was a great. It was on Graham Norton or something. He said. Oh, something was like it? Mm. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. 
And then, yeah, that's right, because Ricky Gervais was on it and he laughed at him. He was like, go on, Ed! He was just like laughing at Fuck him. off, Ricky Gervais, you cunt. <laughs> <laughs> he is, he's a cunt. And that, that makes me, yeah, he is, it makes me think it even more. I know you met him and he was nice, but he's definitely a cunt and I'm right. <laughs> <He's not> a... <laughs> 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 Look, I didn't expect I was going mean, to work. Because he was nice to me once. I didn't but, expect like, I was going to work with Ricky Gervais, so it's fine. You already have, so it's done, isn't it? It's fine. I'm not going to spoil that for future generations. Yeah. No, I, I used to think that, and then when I, like I say, I met him very briefly, but I went to meet him, and he was a lovely guy. I, uh, so. I, I've, for a very, look, like, just to be perfectly clear, and I've never met him, I don't like Ricky Gervais. I've got my reasons, and I don't know him as a person. I will say on the flip side of that, I hated Jimmy Carr forever. And then he regularly stayed at the hotel I worked at, and he's one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. And and I'm a firm believer in the idea of you know if you see how people treat the staff, that's what they're really like. That's yeah. what they're really like. Well, that's what I mean. Like I was on on Life's Too Short, and I was basically an extra. And he chatted to me, and he had the time of day for me, and he wanted to talk, and you know, and so it's like, well. Dude, that's that's like you say by your own rules. Mm, mm, yeah, uh, that that. Well, yeah, and I haven't met him, so he's still a cunt. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but exactly. I, I mean, that that really is a great leveler, and I just haven't met him. So I'm sure if I met him, and he's lovely to me, I might change my mind. And as I think with Jimmy Carr as well, I just always thought he was a cunt. And then when I met him, he was consistently so lovely to all of us who worked there, um, and and all the staff and stuff, and had time for everybody when he didn't need to, and stand around and chat. And I, keep it in mind. As someone who I thought was a cunt, as was the word we keep using, <laughs> I wasn't seeking to make pleasant with him or hang out with him. Mm. He just won me over by being a, a, a kind, humane person. And I was like, yeah, do you know what? I'm 24 years old. I'm angry about everything because I have a shit job. It looks like I'm wrong about this. Also, <laughs> as a 37-year-old going like, you're 24, you're wrong about lots of stuff. <laughs> you know, it's probably still up. But uh, yeah, you know, so that's it. That's a complete sidebar about celebrity, but there you go. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I would say most people I've met who are celebrities or whatever, I've, I've been, I thought were thoroughly lovely people. I haven't. Here's um, a little. But... <laughs> <laughs> <Right. clears throat> um, but there you are. Um... I know one person who I'm not going to name. Because I what before because I I would be very fortunate through my like film work I think let's be perfectly honest because I did that doc a couple of years ago I met a bunch of people right I I had this book, mm. like, but before that as a hotel guy I met tons of people like I met like Al Gore and stuff when I was you know what I mean like I met all sorts of people as a hotelier before I was behind a camera and stuff and I won't name him but there's one guy who has worked with Ricky Gervais this actor who was a fucking cunt he was horrible to everyone and do you know what if i said his name most of you would know who he was and i think that's really telling he was not particularly Mm. famous more famous than you (laughs) but more famous than me as well but i'll we'll talk about it afterwards but he was awful he was horrible to all the staff real bully mean 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 guy and it's like Dude, we've had all these different celebrities and actors through the hotel all the time, and they're so nice. They're so so nice. And you, the fucking one guy who's who I recognise, and nobody else does because I'm the film nerd. You're a, you're a piece mm. of shit. Like you're so mean to everybody. I think there's something about like you know when you still have something to prove. If you're the guy in the shadow, you know what I mean. If you're the, I I know what you mean. It's usually the people at that level who have a. You know, because they probably had a, a loftier aspirations and they're known for a thing they would never really want to be known for. And, you know, uh, maybe, maybe they have something to prove. You know, I think that's, I think that's probably what it is. But because you're, you know, I know, I know we're no mates, need. but you're, you're not like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know. Well, because I think I just, I, I honestly believe in like, I, because don't get me wrong, like I went, to, I, hands up, like I went through a period, I guess it was in my late 20s, early 30s, where I was like, booking tons of jobs be it adverts or, or TV gigs or whatever and I guess I thought like oh you know um, you know this is me this is I'm, I'm on the train now or I'm on the ladder or I'm on the whatever and um, 
of course, pretty much shortly thereafter, ate a big shit sandwich and, you know, the phone didn't ring for a long time and whatever. Um, <laughs> so, and I by no means went to the stage of kind of being a dick to loads of people. But, you know, you do get a sort of sense of, no, I am an important person. Because you, you, you had you quite know? a lot of stuff, didn't you, back to back? fairly early on i did yeah i mean yeah you know i did and and then i'm still you know i think the thing i've realized is the the higher sort of end or higher quality stuff you get to do the further apart it gets and that's fine um and i've learned as well like you you be the guy you want to be now don't like say to yourself oh when i'm rich and famous then i'll be you know i'll be the guy everyone loves like don't do that everything you every job you walk on to be exactly who you want to be you know because it doesn't actually being a star on a big film doesn't make you a nice person it's you can be that now so why don't you just be that now and like and and remember that you're really lucky to be cast in anything because there's a thousand people behind you who would do it and i when i say a thousand i actually mean four thousand you know and and i'm not making that up you know there's i've done jobs where people said to me yeah we had four thousand applications we whittled it down to a hundred and then, you know, and it's like you saw 100 people or you saw tapes from 100 people and then you got that down to like 20 and then you actually saw 20. But, you know, this is the level of of shit you're dealing with. So it's like to be on any set, you're you're insanely fortunate. And it's and, and that's, you know, just to be asked to audition, you're very fortunate because people think highly of you and there are people who are staking their reputation, don't forget, if you're a casting director, on calling you in. Um, all right, they don't have to send you tape off if you're at a certain stage, but they're still like they'll still give you know studio space cost money to get you into audition cost money and um, just see it as a blessing. You know that's what I've realised is I like, just see any opportunity as a blessing and 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 you know and I, this is it sounds so wanky, but it's like I don't understand how someone could get to even a modicum of sort of fame or a level that they want to be at. And then be shitty about it. It's like the Bruce Willis thing. I mean, the Tommy Lee Jones thing, apparently. Well, well, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to bring this up particularly, but I will. Linda Fiorentino, oh. um, because uh, you know, she did. Uh, what's the Will Smith uh, Catholic mythology movie? Dogma. So Dogma, yes, yeah. not Will Smith, Kevin Smith. <laughs> Sorry, I was gonna. I'm getting to a joke about Smiths. What I understood right. was she didn't get on with Will Smith on this picture. Oh, and okay. I understand that she didn't get on with Kevin Smith on uh, Dogma. And uh, ha ha ha, she hates Smiths. But it's also a thing, <laughs> yeah, apparently her and Kevin Smith... and Her horse's hooves look terrible. <laughs> 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 that, 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 that's actually Farrier's. Uh, yeah, she, she made the mistake of assuming she, they were She doesn't know her way around an anvil. <laughs> just like probably work with metal. Her jewelry is that would just be great terrible. if she just went off into other careers that somehow evolves. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! Yeah. But yeah, she was supposed to have not got. So I don't want to cast aspersions on her. And the fact is, I mean, you know, I've really liked. I liked her in Dogma and in this, and I can remember mm. a couple of other things, but. You know, she was in Take This Film Alone. Huge, huge global hit. The end of the movie mm. sets her up to be in the second film. Right? The setup mm. is like, Kay's gone. It's going to be her and Will Smith. And um, she, I can't recall anything else she did. You know, clearly it, it, her career sort of evaporated. Um, and I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to say. The fact is I've heard two things about her being difficult to work with and we never saw her again. And the idea of people not being good to work with and then kind of vanishing adds mm. up you know it does add up and and it's just i kind of even hey look like even on a kind of um scumbag level we we did a <laughs> scumbag level i'm referring of course <laughs> to myself um we talked yeah. to, we did a video about uh i can't remember what we called it maybe we did a video about how to make it in freelancing and stuff just before the pandemic yeah yeah yeah, yeah. sort of behind the scenes or whatever yeah. was it inside whatever yeah. we called that one of the last times we were in the room together something mm. i said um you know, and it's it's one of these things that are easy to say, but just be easy to work with. You know, like just just be someone who's easy to work with. And not every job is easy, not every set is easy. But you have to put yourself out there, and you have to be agreeable, and you have to be someone 
you know, you're not going to get work if no one wants to speak to you on the phone, if no one wants to email you, if no one wants to ask you for changes, if no one wants to give you any input, no one will want to work with you. You know? Dude, I, yeah, I, you know, 100%. I, I, um, yeah, I don't understand people who spend decades trying to break in and then when they do get throw their toys out of the pram because their coffee's cold or whatever. You know, it's like, I don't get that. And I don't actually think, you know, I, I, I think that only happens with people who get into the business for the wrong reasons. I think actually, certainly from an actor's perspective, I think those sorts of people are in it for the wrong reasons. And what they're, what that sort of acting out is a, is a product of is the realisation that, hey, guess what? Becoming famous or becoming a well-known actor or whatever didn't solve your daddy issues or didn't make you the favorite son or daughter or hasn't actually made you likable you know because i think people look to it to solve problems in their life and it's like hey guess what it won't because you've still got to be a good rounded wholesome person in order for that to be your life and acting ain't going to change that uh, or being adored i think they think that you know they'll just have adoring fans and right. you know whenever they walk down the street they will feel validated and i think that's what a lot of i think that's what attracts a lot of people and it's a it's a really foolhardy thing and i and i i used to be sort of derisive of those sorts of people and actually now i feel you know generally gen- genuinely quite a swell of compassion for them because i think they're trying to fill a hole in their life that that and, and they're, they're getting into an industry that is never going to satiate it but it's going to constantly keep them on the hook and I think that's really sad because they're going to spend their whole life chasing a thing that's never going to deliver for them, even if they achieve the great success that they no doubt bang on about all the time. But they're in the wrong place. And I don't mean that as a disparaging thing. I don't mean that as a as a nasty thing. But it is it's not going to solve your problems, guys. It really isn't. And you have to you have to constantly ask yourself all the time, do I love this enough to stick at it? And that's why I think like, you know, if someone's on a set and they're whinging about something, it's like, you're not, you're here to solve problems. This is a problem solving exercise. Making a film is all about a massive problem. A film shouldn't exist, but we make it exist because we solve problems. If you're someone who's there causing problems, you're not contributing to this. You know, I mean, as an actor, I see my part in it. I see that I'm telling a story. I'm a conduit for the story. I'm not here to glorify myself. You know, unless that's what the character is, but not really. You know, you're still here in service of the story, and I think that as a guiding principle is much more. No one should be bigger than the project. I think that's, no, no one should no. be bigger than the project. I think that that's the issue. No. I think I, I go back, I rewind actually to the, the discussion of Nicolas Cage earlier, and for good reason. Um, mm. There are two. There, there was a time when to you were a movie star. And then you did straight to video films, and that was it for you. If you didn't, if it mm. didn't pan out being a movie star, you did straight to video, you did TV, and that was a ghetto from which you would not return. And that was that. Mm. We live in a different time now. Production has changed. I think a big part of this is the introduction of, of, of digital over film, uh, the versatility of filmmaking, budgets and stuff. Digital has, has changed a lot. So now, and because of the, I've also talked, uh, we've talked before about the the, the blurring lines between television and cinema as well. Um, mm. so now you can do DTVs and movies as well and there are various shades of this but the two people who do that with impunity the people who kind of move between straight up theatrical releases and DTV are Nicolas Cage and Bruce Willis now Bruce Willis would appear to be very difficult to work with and people continually say this however Bruce Willis can be in a marquee film. Bruce Willis does kind of bring numbers in to some degree. And if you and I were making a cheap ass film and Bruce Willis agreed to turn up for a day, it'd be the worst day of our lives, but we could put Bruce Willis on the poster and we'd sell the movie, right? Yeah. Whereas Nicolas Cage, Nicolas Cage is still in that mystery enigma stage because you and I both know someone, you know, we won't name names, but someone who's worked with Nicolas Cage who just said he was really easy to work with and a great guy. And Nicolas yeah. Cage... Well, Brad. Oh, well, okay. I didn't want to say. <laughs> I think he's all right. No, I think okay, he's all right. No, right. right. So, okay, fine. Late. Whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. To be fair, it's only going to be one of two people we know, isn't it? But anyway. Um, <laughs> uh, but he was like yeah. really fucking good person to yeah. work with, really sound. And if, he will. Do, so, like, Willy's Wonderland was intended as a theatrical release and just got kind of punked to Amazon because of COVID. It, you know, it feels like it might be a story mm. video film, but it isn't. Um, and you can mm. still put Nicolas Cage, like, like, in, like, Enter the Spider Verse right voice role 
huge, yeah. huge yeah. movie. Like, you know, big time thing, and it's a big role. Other stuff he used to put him in, but he'll still go wonky DVD, like straight to video stuff, and he's able to straddle that line. And, and I think people are keen to work with Nicholas Cage because he's easy to work with, and he seems to be very professional, learns his lines, turns up, does his shit, fucks off. Whereas Bruce Willis just turns up and acts like an ass. Is really difficult and scary, yeah. but does what he's there to do, and you just have to sort of survive working with him, and then, you know. Well, yeah, I heard a story. So, I mean, it, it's well, it is first-hand information, but I heard it from so the armorer who I worked with on that film four thing. Mm. Um, he had done the guns. He provided the the armory for Red Two, I think right. it was, and he said, "Yeah, I mean, he told me a story about." Bruce Willis that was like oof and but apparently I mean he basically said like look what happened was there were it was reshoots I think and they had this, this scene in a um, gun range which I think is in the film I seem to remember it being in the film and he said he had to show up first thing in the morning with a bunch of guns and Bruce was going to choose his handgun for the scene um, and then he didn't show and he didn't show and apparently three days went by and Bruce Willis wasn't showing up and they ended up having to put a third AD outside his trailer to catch him on his way out and he was literally just leaving and fucking off somewhere for the day and they were like you are needed on set you do realise that and he was like yeah I don't care and they had to basically like threaten him to get him down to set and then he was really difficult wouldn't shake the guy's hand all this sort of stuff really icy cold and miserable but then at the end of the day he came up to the guy and said look I'm sorry I didn't mean that you know forgive me I, I shouldn't have been like that and he shook his hand and he was all good you know so it's like, i don't know the guy's going through something i, or I honestly think like <laughs> hey look i'm not a doctor i, I think bruce Willis has been really quite depressed for quite some time I, I wonder i i sort of think he's just not all right um well that roast they did with him and, he's coming know, back yeah, for another was, one by the way or he's done it already it was like another, yeah to meet more and stuff like that and it, and it was like um didn't Aston Kutcher get up there and say, "Hey, Dad"? Or whatever. Oh my like, there god! Was, oh my god! There was some. There was, and he, but he took it with such like he was so like warm and not you know he was just sort of going, "I love you." And but I don't know if that was just for the camera. You could you could argue that, I suppose. But he um, can laugh at himself to some degree. I mean, he's, I he's think so. I do, do. You know, I, at the end of the day, we are all human. Like, you know, it's it's a very. It, we, as humans, we are not psychologically set up to deal with what fame is. Yeah. Like we just aren't. We're not set up to be. There, there wasn't a celebrity over. caveman. There's no. There weren't any Neanderthals well, the, that everybody our, knew. Our about. brains aren't set up so that like we can walk. We walk into social situations and everyone knows who you are or thinks they know who you are. You know, everyone knows your name. Everyone knows your your work, and has a. Has, everyone has a presupposition about who you are before you walk in the room. Like we're not geared up for that. And um, so you kind of do have to cover. I mean, it's like child stars. I always think like people who make it really early on in life, I feel a great swell of like sorrow for them in a way because I'm like, you're never going to know. Oh, dude, like, all those Corys. Like, so many dead Corys. <laughs> that was dude, the 80s. Yeah, I mean, like, like, fucking... Well, because, I mean, you know, like someone like Jennifer Lawrence, for example, like wins an Oscar in her 20s. It's like, where's there left for you to go? And and, and also, like, you're... I don't, by all accounts, I don't think she's a nasty person or anything, but it's like, what do you expect? Do you walk onto a set now and think, oh, I mean, about, she seems to have sort of disappeared in, in recent, you know, time, but then so has everything because COVID. Mm. But it's like, you know, I think she just, I think she seems to have got, like, you saw it with that last X Men film she was in, I think. She was just like, ugh. <laughs> you know, contractual fucking obligations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used like, to be like in the background of these, but now I'm the star. Like, oh. yeah, and it's just like you. I think you. I, that's that's the thing. Is sort of being awoken to the superficiality of it all and and the disillusionment and everything and kind of. But I think if you're, you know, somebody gets into it for the right reasons and, um, uh, you know, and, and has a sort of rounded view of the world and rounded view of yourself, I think that's the great weird thing about acting is it's like you have to be curious and you have to be empathetic um you know it's that that age-old thing of like oh if you're if you're going to play hitler you have to you have to be able to empathize or you have to be able to understand doesn't mean you have to be able to we don't, you don't have to agree with him obviously but <laughs> you know but you have to you have to take the time to understand him otherwise you can't portray him accurately right and there's that thing of like there's that weird conundrum of like you're you're 
you're lying, but you're lying truthfully right, as right, an actor. Right. But, but you have to love that process. You can't, that's what you have to enjoy. You can't be, you know, because I've met so many people who are like, oh, it's all about the glorification of me. This is all about making me a star. And, it, and look, that works. Some people do that and they become stars. But I, but I don't think they're happy. Um, at, a, at a very core level, I don't think they're happy because they've kind of, I don't think fame in and of itself, and you see this now with reality TV stars and YouTube stars and all that sort of stuff, it's like fame in and of itself, notoriety, doesn't solve anything. That just makes your life harder, mm. you know? Mm. Uh, so that's my long rambling crap. <laughs> no, it's ins- insider <laughs> talk, isn't it? It's knowledge. It's knowledge. knowledge. Right, yeah. I could give you some insider right. talk because I'm mostly inside at the moment. Except, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't know if I said this on air, but I, I was I was a bit fed up today. I've had not a great day, and uh, in Cambridge now you can rent electric scooters. And I think Simon's still in the chat, and Simon introduced me to this. You get like an app, and uh, to make myself feel better, I just went around and rode a scooter around, <laughs> and it really worked. So I was like, oh, I was, I was out when the sun was coming down, and don't get me wrong, I've been in Cambridge a long time. Cambridge bores the fuck out. Like Cambridge is boring, right? Cambridge is boring as fuck, but. It's really beautiful, and I'm just really jaded to how beautiful my city is. You know, my my place of birth. It is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful city, man. beautiful medieval city. And there was times I was just tooling around on my um, I was tooling around on my scooter, listening to a couple of tunes in my headphones, and uh, it's caught the sun coming down on like the cobbled streets and shit. And I was like, ah, oh, it's all right, and it could be worse. I mean, I did have a bottle of vodka in my bag, which helped. I wasn't drinking it, but just know, <laughs> knowing it was there it was, it was quite good. <laughs> There you go. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I do miss Cambridge, and I, you know, I grew up there, and um, especially in the spring and the summer, it's, it's, there's, there's nowhere like it's it. It's beautiful in the sp- mm. yeah, Matt. I, it's a city that comes alive in the summer. Uh, it really does. It, mm. it, it, like um, when I, I used to live two houses ago. I used to live in a place up in uh, Petersfield, up in the centre, and um, it, they, we had blossom trees all in our little it was a little kind of cul-de-sac and it was all kind of blossom trees and every spring it was just pink blossoms everywhere it was fucking awesome and you just walk out to the city centre and stuff and you know if you get up round the river and shit at the right time of year you go down Jesus Green and sit on the grass have a few beers go down the mill pond it's beautiful yeah I just cleared my yeah. head with an electric scooter ride today it worked that worked I was quite that's alright I went for a walk and I went I'm going to get a scooter ride do that I can see that yeah. I can yeah. see that yeah. it works it works yeah, yeah. yeah. Lockdown sucks. You know, fucking get outside, you know. Uh, June June twenty so, first, I mean, man. That's when we can all just go sneezing each other's mouths again. I guess. Apparently, <laughs> yes, apparently so. Like we Mate, used to. I, I, yeah. I really, I really hope so. I mean, I'm one of you know, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I, I just want to keep people safe, but I am also very acutely aware of the fact that we need to get out again. And those two things are not mutually exclusive. You know, I do think you can believe in both of those things. Um, but it, but it's, yeah, I mean, it, I, I'm very fortunate. You know, I, 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 I caught myself today. I think I was listening to a podcast with an actor or, oh no, one of my friends, uh, one of my dear friends actually is an actor and a very good actor and not someone I'm in any way in competition with. So there's no, there's none of that, but he's just been like, car. he's got a really good agent and he's really, he's a fantastic actor, but he has a very striking specific look that puts him really at the forefront and stuff. And rightfully so, because it does not take anything away from him, but he's, he's fucking great. Uh, and he's a, such a sweet bloke as well. And I, and I'm not just wanking on about someone that's really true, but anyway, and he's, anyway, <laughs> but, um, he just like he was like on Facebook he just goes fuck I've just landed this massive job and then he goes oh, I've just landed another massive job but fucking hell like and it was just like he just landed some major major roles which is fantastic and I but I caught myself having that thought of like fuck I should be what am I doing wrong I, uh, oh yeah I really need to get that new showreel edited and then I need to get one done for this casting director who I said I was going to fucking write to and I haven't and fuck I need to get on that you know and it's like and I can't catch myself going. Not, I'm not comparing myself in a jealous way, but I'm going like, kind of going like, shit, people are getting work. I should be fucking doing this. And I'm like, no, but I'm getting work. I've been cast and stuff. I can't really talk You've about it. You've got a cool thing. You've I've got, got a cool thing. Yeah. I I, was... I'm more, in, in a lot of ways, I'm more excited about the cool thing than you are. It's <laughs> yeah. sort of like, it's like your it's wheelhouse. in my, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Duncan's doing a thing in my wheelhouse. And I'm kind of like, oh, Put it, I, without, without giving much away, without sort of talking about who's involved, because I don't I really don't want to like get in trouble. But, um, 
which I don't think I would, but I don't, I don't want to do it anyway. Uh, I have I have made my way through versions of the script, for there are different versions, which gives you a clue as to what kind of thing it is. Um, and they're fucking cool. Like, even as a passing fan of the thing, I I think it's I think it's cool, man. I think you're gonna like it as well because it's got some really, it's it's got a real Escape from New York vibe about it, but with the thing you like, <laughs> which is not very subtle. Uh, thing to say. Maya says Dread. Like he's not playing Judge Dread. That would be, I'm not. Alas, like, Rob. Thank you for the vote of confidence. That would be. I would. I don't think I would probably have died of some kind of aneurysm <laughs> going to my tangential relationship to a dread thing. You would hate Did you? What? Sorry. Yeah, no, I wouldn't because no one's going to cast me, are they? I'd have Obviously, to get one of those like, things, you know, those things that they can't obnoxiously advertise in front of YouTube videos where you have to chew a thing and it, it's made my jaw 10 years younger or whatever. <laughs> yeah. I'd have to get one of those. Yeah, just like fucking good jaw Yeah, workouts. I'd have to get loads of jaw yeah. I'll, I'll tell you what, though. Um... In a kind of tangential thing, and I don't mean to derail that. Uh, there's uh, some adaptations of Dread stuff coming out, like audio ones. Oh, nice, yeah. yeah. And they're doing America, and they're doing The Pit, which are two of the best, two of my faves. Nice. Uh, Joseph Fiennes as Dread. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I kind of see it. I kind of see it. It's funny because 2000 D announced it, and it's not through Big Finish to the other. Thing. I think it's through. I think Penguin are doing it or something. Yeah. Um. And uh, Peterson Joseph, who is who is uh, Johnson from Peep Show, is narrating them, which I just is amazing. But um, who's someone I also really like? So they've got kind of names, and they've got David Warner doing that one of the other two thousand AD ones. They've got names to them. Mm. And Joseph finds the Judge Dread, and and a lot of people are, like people just are just not acknowledging that these things are happening. And I'm thinking to myself, like I'm really interested to see his interpretation. I I would really like to know yeah. how he's handling that i mean i definitely he's not you know i don't want to look at it through that lens but he's not a million miles away from carl urban as a performer and stuff so it's sort of like yeah i'm into that i really want to see and america as well and america and the pit are both stories that are very much about dreads in a life in as much as he has one mm. uh, particularly the pit and i'm just sort of like yeah i really want to know what joseph is going to do that sounds cool i'm i'm all right with that so uh, yeah, we're interested to see how that how that pans out. Um, I mean, it could be awful, but I don't think it will be. I, I mean, you know. But at the same time, also as well, because they're comics, I kind of like. I mean, they're comics. They're not particularly long comics, and I'm also saying like so like America has like some of the most amazing work by Colin McNeil, the painter, the artist. So Colin McNeil's interpretation of that world. It's like yeah, fuck you, radio. Because that all goes out the window. Yeah. So like, you know, it's not like adapting a novel when you adapt a comic, half the work is gone mm. to audio. Um, but Joseph Fies is dread. I'm I'm down for it. I'll, I want to hear it. Fair enough. Very cool. Right yeah, no, I, I do. I, I mean, that's yeah, that's I, that was a character. It's weird because I mean, like, I think with this, you sadly with the Stallone version, like that was a character I suddenly became quite obsessed with for a while. And I had the ABC and the, whatever it was, the Dread Encyclopedia. But again, it was that sort of... You I've, uh, I've Shockingly, I have that behind you. Yeah, well. the, the A to Z of Judge Dread. That's it. There you go. But it was that thing of like, suddenly it was Judge Dread. It wasn't... Because, um, you know, 2000... It, it's not... That isn't necessarily the point of the the comic book right it's not it's about the world it's not just about judge dread though he is well, the, well like each 2000 ad they're not all set in the same universe mm. so each it's not like it's not like marvel or dc where they're set in the same continuity like each story for the most part is its own thing so judge dread is just one continuity like the next story could be completely unrelated right you know um they just sort of put dread on the front they they called it 2000 AD feature here's what they did Judge Dredd was the breakout strip, so Judge Dredd got put to the front of the comic every week. And then they started putting featuring Judge Dredd on it. And after the Stallone film came out, they moved, they moved Judge Dredd to the back of the comic and quietly dropped featuring Judge Dredd from the front. Really? Which So they were suddenly ashamed. It's like it's like it's like Marvel pretending they don't have Captain America. You know what I mean? It's just sort of or Spider Man. It's just sort of like, yeah, no, man, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. So like after that movie came out, they quietly pushed it right. to the back. 
Which is when the pit came out, which is when the strip the pit happened, which is one of the best ever dread strips. Oh, yeah. Anyway, people are just going like, fuck you, you dreary cunt, you dreary nearly 40 year old cunt. What are you talking about, you boring shit? <laughs> but, uh, you know, if you do enjoy that, uh, come to Patreon. The special content we've got lined up for you mm-hmm. is me talking about Judge Dredd for 12 hours. <laughs> and it's not 12 videos, it's one 12 hour video. This is a marathon. Well, I'm drinking and I'm sniffing glue. Uh, no, it's not that. It's not that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, well, but the point of my thing was to say that sorry, to be kind I'm of sorry. grateful of, you know, I mean, I, like, um, I, fa- I had an acting job yesterday that I did. So, you know, um, via, via zoom, but still, was it, was it voice or was it recorded? No, it was video? recorded video. I actually learned how to set my phone up to record 4k and everything, which was kind of cool. Um, but, um, no, I, I mean, I, uh, you, I'm just, I'm, I've realised how important it is to practice gratitude and just, you know, be grateful for everything you have, and, you know, because you get into very much into into that mindset in this industry in particular of sort of, it's ridiculous when you when you really step back and look at it. It's like, oh, I'm pissed off that I'm not Tom Hanks or whatever, and it's like, what, 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 what how does that help? You know, I mean, how does that help you? Like, and it's also as well, like you you spend time around people. Wow, well, you know how Tom Cruise got started. Well, you know how so and so got started. It's like that's not helpful. Firstly, it was thirty fucking forty years ago, or whatever. And secondly, they're them in California. Like I'm me in England. Like, what's that got to do with anything? You know. So, and and also the 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 takeaway story that no one seems to learn is they all did it differently. Because mm. guess what? They all provided, essentially, they provided value, uh, a, a unique value that no and one there's else... there's an element of had. right place, right time, and happens. There's no formula. No. Insane. No, there's it's no crazy. formula. Really. It's crazy. You can't, you can't read. Re- you'll never reproduce it. Yeah. Otherwise, we'd all be... Fu- I've said this time and time again. It's when clients come to me and say, can you make us a viral video? And it's like, no. <laughs> I can make you a viral video. It's like, oh, c- can you summon a genie? Oh, yeah, I'll get you one. Shall I? Do you want all three wishes? <laughs> Look out here! Yeah. Like if, if, I, <laughs> if I could summon a genie, I'd be sat on a billion pounds, getting blown by six Kelly Brooks. Like, don't talk to me. Yeah, that's right. I'm I'm using my nineties crush. I'm not changing it. I'm keeping it. <laughs> keeping it till I die. I'm not gonna fuck it. I'll make a viral video. Oh yeah, absolutely. I'll just make you a viral video. Sure. I know, right? Oh, that ain't crazy. Like, come on, guys. And what's worse than that actually is that people that claim to be able to sell you that, I hate that. It's so dishonest because they can't. Oh, I, it's like when someone says, "Oh, make a viral video." They can't because where's yours? The amount of people I've come make, up. Where? I've, I've, I've. I remember. So there used to be a thing. I don't know if it still exists called the Actors Expo, which is like, well, main, you know, clues in the title. But I, I remember coming. It's just like this, and it was so like the Simpsons thing of like the candy, like the the candy of a thousand uses. It's like mm-hmm. game <laughs> one. It's like one a substitute for your humor, a substitute hey, for your a own. Humor lip. substitute for your own acting. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just like go on. I'm needed in the basement. In the basement. <laughs> it's just like I had this one. This one. Um, company whose thing was we you know they had this little promo playing on a tv and they were like I've, I've told this so forgive me if i've told this story already but there was this thing of like we'll fly you to la to meet with top casting directors and you'll get the opportunity uh, to meet david hederson uh, or uh, a top la casting director who will view you and you know it was just this whole thing of like and it cost scam and it cost fucking five grand four grand five grand or something four grand i think and i said to them i was like so presumably there's an auditioning process right we have to go through because otherwise and they were like no and i went well so the only criteria i have to meet is i need a spare four grand i was like is i have four grand but I, was yeah. like, but I was like what does that guarantee me at the other end because surely the idea is these are top hollywood casting directors who don't have time to fuck around so they want to know they're meeting people of quality what are you guaranteeing to provide them dickheads with four grand i was like that doesn't give me any quality assurance whatsoever i was like what is this this shit and they were like i need it in the basement that's basically <laughs> what i got back was like hey. i just think was... i i got um i've had a few on linkedin kind of private messages going like oh you, you could come on our video production course we see your video offer you come on our video production course we could help you get clients and become a, a, a full-time video producer and it's like i am that <laughs> that 
that that's why I'm on LinkedIn. <laughs> like, like, what? I know, you I... you found me because I am that. I know. <laughs> so why I, you, I... you want me to give you nine grand? <laughs> like, come on. I just I do find that 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 thing. It's one thing to say, look, I'm I can help you. Um. Like I can help you get used to, or be be pre- prepare yourself for being someone who works at the upper echelons of a, an industry or something. That, that, that's one thing. But th- but to sort of say like I I pay me and I will um, imbue you with the contacts or the secrets in order to be famous. Oh, and- look, here's, you know, I'm very good at business. Pay me 10 grand and I'll show you how to get rich. Okay, two things. Firstly, you're rich because people give you 10 grand to be rich. And secondly, if I could afford to give you 10 grand, I'm probably rich already. <laughs> well, and therefore, it's the false economy of the... Having a, you know, Yeah, don't get me wrong. Like having, the, the mentorship is, is, is a valuable thing. Like, I'm not going to... I don't mean to deride that or devalue that. I mean, because I do think mentorship is important. But it's when someone is, yeah, like you say, trying to sell you it for tens of thousands of pounds. And you're like, is your secret charge people... Yeah, of course it is. Of course it is. Like, you, know, not, not, you know, there is a lot to be said for because I've been mentored in, in places and stuff, but someone shouldn't be asking you up front for a five figure sum for it. You know what I mean? Because like yeah. the reason you're rich is because you charge people ten grand, and like if four idiots do that, you have got forty grand. <laughs> that, that's, that's you know that's the whole. You know, you know, look, um, uh, in in other guises, I work for people who don't do that, but offer what could be termed that. But it's like actually the ones I work for offer free stuff that gets you to a certain level. That then, if you want to go on and develop more, you can then pay for it. You know, that's one. I think that's a more honourable way to do it. If that makes sense, it's the thing of like, well, I'll help you upskill so that you can see that shit works basically and if you and if you're happy with that then stick with that but if you want to go on and you know it's not for everyone and i think that's something i've come to realize as well is that actually you know everyone sort of goes on about i wish i was rich or i wish i had or fucking and it's like do you though because it comes with a lot more than you think it doesn't come with blowjobs from angels and no or, or six kelly brooks with, or six kelly brooks yeah it does not come with that it comes with a fucking shit ton of other shite that you probably haven't even considered and you may not want it and that's fine like i just wish everyone could be rich for a day or something and see what it's like and then actually probably a lot of people would be much happier with their lives because um life ain't that bad no. you don't need 12 ferraris and six kelly brooks i mean but if you can give me that for a day do i get to keep <laughs> it if i want or is that um, you know i'm just I'm just. I don't know if viable Kelly Brook cloning technology exists. But <laughs> Kelly LeBrock cloning technology apparently does exist. So. Well, I mean, Kelly scientists first created Kelly LeBrock, but they perfected the formula with Kelly Brook. Kelly LeBrock was the. You can tell. Out the, you can tell by the name. She was the first. They took out version. the French bit. It was much better. <laughs> Brexit means Brexit. <laughs> 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 Well, exactly. Like, exactly. <laughs> That's just science, my friends. It's just <laughs> science. <laughs> At the Wing Kong Expansion, it's £6.50. I'd really, ah. end, but with no note. And he says, I think, nothing. I can't remember what he did earlier. I can't remember what we were talking about. I think he was talking about meeting people. And he just said, his comment just said, Benjamin Netanyahu. Which is a great Alan Partridge deep cut. So I was just yeah. And uh, Wing, Wing Kong Exchange is always with the uh, Alan Partridge. A few of you are in with uh, Alan Partridge deep cuts, but Wing Kong Exchange, I, I particularly expect that from you. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent. We get excellent deep, Alan Partridge deep cuts in the in the comments and the chat. So uh, you know, should we um? What? Should we get? Yeah, was that you didn't wanted to meet or so? Was it? I can't, I can't remember, remember what it was. Yeah, I think it was when we were talking about shitbag celebrities or something. I, I can't remember. But uh, Lynn, yeah. Lynn, no, Lynn, Lynn, yeah, yeah. Stop. Lynn wants to meet. Stop, him stop talking about Benjamin Netanyahu, Netanyahu, Lynn. You're never going to meet him. <laughs> That's right. <yeah. laughs> <laughs> well, it's tragic, isn't it? We just. This is what we do all the time in whatsapp is just fucking do the sa- the same old shit and then we'll laugh at our own jokes and yeah. and that's amazing <laughs> and I wouldn't change it. 
Yeah, I know, man. Oh, fucking hell. Sure. <laughs> See, Steve Allen, all, all Steve Allen has done out of context is say they've rebadged it, you fool. It, you and fool. I'm laughing because yeah. it's brilliant. I'm not driving a mini metro. I'm not driving a mini metro. I'm not driving a mini metro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, uh, Emerald Sky says, "Duncan, do you like the film Black Rain?" Um, I don't think I've seen it. Black Rain is that the uh, Ridley Michael Scott Doug- Michael Douglas one? I've never seen it. Yeah, no, people, people it. like it. Um, yeah. But I'm I'm uh, a <laughs> I'm, like purple. I'm, rain, I'm not Ridley Prince. Scott phobic. I'm Ridley Scott f- skeptic. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not or really hard true. rain with Christian Slater. I've seen that. Right, right. But, uh, I've seen, I've seen I've seen Hard Rain and Black, what was it? Uh, Dynamite uh, Panther. Dynamite Black uh, Panther. Yes, I've seen Black Panther. There you go. So I've sort of you know if it's something like he's Black somewhere Panther in the middle, somewhere in the middle, isn't it? Hard Rain. Um, then then yes, the uh, rain's but, made of stones. It's so hard. Is that that film? Like, what is Hard Rain? Is that, and they, and they need Adam, uh, not adamantium. What's it called? The vibranium. Vibranium. So. Because the rain's uh, vibranium. Or something or whatever. <laughs> Richard, have you ever thrown a monkey in the sea for eating your duty freeze? Says Steve Allen. <laughs> 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 Flipped it over and drove off. <laughs> <laughs> shall we shall we shall we uh shall we end this shortly? Maybe we'll we to end this. Give it five sh- minutes, five minutes, five minutes, ten thirty five. Okay. Five, five, five right. minutes. So just, <laughs> get to, I'm having a bit too much fun. So we shed viewers yes yeah, as we shared viewers a bit too much for a movie's over um mm. so, oh uh sam montgomery hey sam uh hey guys been getting back into the arkham games recently curious rich if you do a long play of them in the a let's play of them in the lead up to batman um yeah i think if we're back I in like the room to, I, well i was gonna say we could do it together couldn't we if the, we're back I in the room get on board with that. I, I was i i uh well i played the first two um the I, Citrus, though that's oh. it peaks with the second one i think well, I, th- I heard that, and I kind of went, oh, do you know what? Because, it, because the third one, again, my console days ended with my 360, which is, I guess, embarrassing. But So um, I've not been current for some time. Mm. But um, that, um, yeah, was it Arkham Origins? That was the third one, which oh, was made Arkham, by... Arkham Sonic Origins, Hell. I'd say it's the second and a half one, really. Um, right. But, yeah, the, the kind of true third one was Arkham oh, Knight. Right. Which had like yeah, it's good. I never, I still haven't finished it. Like there's these Batmobile sections. That... Well, I played it with someone else who shall not be named. Um, yeah. And uh, Mister Black. Why? And uh, yeah, it just again looked like more of the same, basically. And I was kind of like, mm, this doesn't seem to have moved on particularly. Well, they they moved uh, on, you see, Duncan, by putting in all the Batmobile sections, which are yeah. dreadful and slow the game down. And <laughs> this really sucks. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I um, because weren't Rocksteady going to make a Superman game? That was supposed to be. They were supposed happen. to be. That's... So what's happened is, so Rocksteady are doing a Suicide Squad game. Yeah. And the so no, oh, oh, that's not what I said. <laughs> that's not what I wanted. I know. Don't well, don't. I can kind of help. I can kind of help. Be be chill. Be chill. <laughs> I can kind of help. So yeah. Arkham Origins was made by Warner Brothers Montreal. Yes. Um, which is Arkham Origins is all right actually. It's pretty decent, I must say, but it feels like an add-on pack for City. City's better. They're supposed to be doing a Superman game, and that's kind of been bubbling under for a suspiciously long amount of time. So it seems like they they're going to be doing a Superman game. Um, so we'll see. I love a yeah, Superman game. Do you know what? I'm I'm a sucker for Superman and GTA for some reason. It's not an open world thing. It's just a they're I very different open worlds. They're very different open. Yeah. Worlds. Yeah. Um, it's like that, that I was. I re, I bought a 360 initially because I wanted that Superman Returns game. That's how long ago. Oh shit! Right. Uh, okay. That's yeah, cool. and that was one of those like, well, you put a lot of work into the Superman model, but fuck all else. Yes, so it was just a, not a much sort of weird simulator, but it, it wasn't much of a game. But um, I, yeah, if you can crack us, I think the best Superman game I've ever played was Shadow of Apocalypse. Which was the animated series, one. Okay. and they nailed that. And what, it was done in levels. That, what was that on? That was on PS2, um, okay. and they it had cell shading and everything, and it was it looked like the cartoon. Um, and there were some open world elements, but there were also levels and stuff. And actually, 
and there was a level where you had to be Clark Kent and you couldn't like use powers and stuff. Um, and um, it's really, it was really good. That was probably the best super, and it all worked sort of seamlessly. And it was, I don't know, it just seemed to work really well. And the idea that like you sort of had a health bar, it didn't mean you died, but you basically got the powers punched out of you or something. Right. Um, right. But it was sort of incident. It was one of those like, well, I get that I have to have a thing that knocks me back eventually but you know but the, but it was just clever about how it went about it whereas i think the superman returns one had a thing where it's like, it wasn't your health bar it's, it was the city process health and it's like fine that, that, <laughs> why would it have this arbitrary thing of like if a certain number of people yeah. die? oh no the just... docks fell off oh <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly it was just a bit like yeah that's not subversive in the way you think it is it's a, it's one of those things it's this is a great kind of game marketing thing when when they say that in video game marketing you're like oh good idea but then you play it and it's like oh all right that doesn't really it just work. amounts to the like, same thing it's because the creepy. spider-man open world games based on the movie were really really good well the spider-man 2 is really really good and i think yeah they made a slice of that pie didn't they yeah um, so i don't know uh i was gonna say ricky spanish said are you gonna finish resident evil 7 we will do yes um we will we will get there um i was gonna there was a I think it was on PS2. There was a Batman animated series game. Did you ever play that one? It's quite good. I think it was. Yes, PS2. I had it. I had. I had. Yeah. So I had one that was based on the New Adventures of Batman and Robin. So the, yeah, like, the that new... one. That one. Yeah, that was, yeah. and that's the one that I think the Batman Begins game was a reskin of because a lot of the animation of the characters, like, do you? Remember, I don't know if you played the Batman Begins game, but there was that thing of like, in order to do the cape fly thing. You had to like double tap jump, and he just sort of jumped and did a somersault, and then got his cape out. And I was like, "Doesn't seem very in keeping yeah, with that... Batman." And then I realised that like, that's exactly what happened in the Batman and Robin. That was the Splinter one. Cell type one, wasn't it? The Batman Begins game. I remember. Yeah, it wasn't bad. Like it was. It was a pretty no, faithful recreation of the film as well. It I wasn't remember bad. hearing that was all right. Like because I think they had a, this a case of where they had everyone except Christian Bale. Um... No, Christian Bale did it. Oh, he did do it. Oh wait, hold on. No, the Terminator Salvation game had everyone except Christian Bale. Um, right, right, and was also as good as you'd expect a Terminator Salvation to be. <laughs> yeah, which is not very good for anyone who is not aware of subtext. Um, <laughs> right, shall we? Uh, it, we it, we're, we're 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 over time, so we'll we'll, we'll log off. Okay. We? So yes, yeah, Duncan and I are going to take a break for two weeks until I guess the middle of March from YouTube. Mm-hmm. However, we are planning some exclusive content for patrons. So you, those of you on Patreon, those of you who have subscribed, you will not be missing out on anything. Uh, we're going to kick off with... Well, actually, when you're on the $3 tier, you'll always get an AMA stream every month. If you're on the $5 tier, you know what? you'll always get a uh, private watch Do you know what I've just realised? I, I knew it suddenly, As soon as you said that, to the middle of March, a, an alarm bell went off in my head. Now, my wife and I had a conversation the other day and we're like, what day is your birthday on? Turns out it's on Thursday, the 30th of March. So I might not be back. For okay, that well, that's fine. Hey, look, <laughs> we might have a three week break then. Or, well, or maybe I'll fill in or something. That would mean still missing. When, like, when's your no, birthday? Because your that's, birthday? my birthday's 30th of March. So that's. Uh, well, that's uh, a Tuesday. Two, three, four. That's a Tuesday. Oh, it is yeah. a Tuesday. I saw the yeah, tea. You saw See, the my calendar is tea. tea. That's what you did. Forget about it. Forget, Forget about, about it. it. I'll be. I, I Forget sh- about it. Forget about it. I should be 37 when next. Well, not when next we meet. One of us. Okay, One up. of us. One of us. Fair enough. I'm sorry. Forget. Forgive me. That yes. was a, Okay, yeah. so about two weeks. Okay, two weeks two hiatus. hiatus. Very we good. Put, uh, exclusive content on Patreon, so those of you uh, on Patreon won't miss out. Every month on Patreon for the three dollar tier, you get the AMA stream. For the five dollar tier, you get the AMA stream and a private watch party. Last night, Duncan, with the director of Wicked Witches, did one. Uh, we're back one of those in a month, but uh, we've just got a bunch of random stuff teed up for the break. It should be quite good. Mm. So we just need to chill out for a little bit, and then we'll be back with more. Watch Basically, a sort of a reincarnation of my driving with Duncan thing, which I which I'm going to plan to do. It might be on my driveway, but in my car. So my new car. There you so go. You there you car. go. Uh, so that's An exciting. Um, I was going to do some vlogs about um, how I got started out uh, as a professional filmmaker. So that was my thing. I was right. going to talk about how that happened. So I had a very interesting. I realised that I should be making money as a filmmaker at someone else's wedding in 2016. 
and I'm going to tell you that story. So there you go. It's more exciting than it sounds, I swear. <laughs> yeah, cool. yeah. So that's it. So <laughs> and, and, and we'll be back in, in kind of two, three weeks' time after that. But exclusive content for Patreon. So those, those of you on Patreon, don't worry about it. It's going to be cool. So uh, should we go yeah. to credits, uh, Duncasian? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Everyone's saying, what's your new car, Duncan? My new car is... Cut to credits. <laughs>